Welcome everyone. I'm at the hero. I did not do a countdown because I I forgot. I forgot that we you have to get ready for this shit. Pinky's here as well. Uh, yes, yes I am. And this is the Shut Your Mouth Lounge, episode two twenty three, I wanna say. Could be. Could be. So Pink. Is anything coming out on your channel? Yeah, there's definitely going to be Dead by Daylight stuff coming out on my channel. Back in the swing of it now. Alright. Is that all? That should be all. I haven't recorded anything, and I don't know if I'll be recording anything different this week, so just just the Dead by Daylight. Yeah. As for me, uh, we're back in development hell. <laughs> <laughs> The last two videos that I scripted, I did take the audio, but I didn't get around to editing it, and it just doesn't feel like the scripts don't feel right. So I will probably need to rewrite both of them, which is gonna be great. Yeah. And yeah, that's that's about it. Uh. No, I didn't. I, 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 I felt like I remember re remembered recording something, but no. So yeah, that that's it. And as for the group channel, we'll see. We don't know if everything, everything's scheduled either. <laughs> Genuinely. <laughs> I have raw footage to edit. So if, if I can do it in time, then maybe. But maybe not. We'll see. Maybe not. <laughs> so yeah, Pink, what have you been up to this week? What have I been up to this week? Uh, let's see. I played a lot of Escapist 2 with my family. Still a pretty fun, but also a pretty irritating game sometimes. Yeah, I, I was uh, going to ask because it's still stinky. Yeah, pretty stinky, but we were able to break out once or twice, so that was fun. How many times uh, did you get killed by the, the Invincible Dogs? Actually, I never triggered the Invincible Dogs this time, which is probably why we were able to make it out. Yeah. Yeah, uh, not anything else of note to mention in that game. Um, I watched Moon Knight. They uh, released their first episode on Wednesday, and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was very fun. They featured Wham's Wake Me Up Before You Go-Go, so uh, that was like 10 stars right there, right off the bat. Was it said during, during like a murder scene? Kind of, kind of. Okay. Yeah. I approve. Very, very appropriate usage right there. Okay, wake me up before you go go. Should it should be used used uh, as like a backing check for a scene where a guy shoots up a house while everyone is sleeping. <laughs> That's its purpose in life. Indeed. But, uh, yes, I really enjoyed Moon Knight. I thought Oscar Isaac was putting forth a phenomenal performance. And he really gets to go all out since he's playing a schizophrenic psychopath. Fun to watch. And I can't wait for the next episodes. And this series is only getting, like, five episodes, which is kind of crazy to me. WandaVision got, like, nine, and it was still kind of stinky yeah. as well. The first episode, the first episode that establishes Moon, Moon Knight. The, the next four are there, there to um to, to show you the blood feud, blood feud between him and Dracula for the for his five yeah. bucks. <laughs> uh, but I, I thought this first initial episode was great. If they were to, you know, just cap it off on the first episode, that that would suck. But it also makes for a very very nice short film. In all honesty, so. I was a fan. But outside of Escapist and Moon Knight, I played with you guys, obviously, with Dead by Daylight the other day, but aside from that, I've not done anything new. All right. Well, let's see. Uh, video games. I have pretty well finished every game I've got for my first day. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, beat Katamari. I liked it. I think it would be a good thing to do. Like, cause like, the game isn't particularly long. 
if we wanted to do a full playthrough, it would still take more than one session, but we don't have to do a full playthrough, so, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like the, the real thing is that all of the all of the levels are kept in actual minutes. As in, like, if a, if a level says it's gonna be done in 20 minutes, it's gonna be done in 20 minutes, regardless of whether or not you actually complete it in 20 minutes. All right, then. But yeah, it could be fun. I may need to figure out a way to um, let y'all hear the game because the music is a big part of, of the experience for Katamari and I need you to suffer through You Are Smart as well. <laughs> like most of, this, most of the music in Katamari is great. You Are Smart is fine, but it's out of, all, out of the whole soundtrack, it gets the, mo the most grading the, the fastest, I'd say. Understandable. Then, uh, what else did I do? Well, I played uh, Street Fighter V like, online against randoms for the first time in five years, probably. I don't know. <laughs> Exciting. It's been a while. Yeah. I met a couple of people who were really, like, um, very gimmicky. I don't mean that in, in the, like, I don't even know what to call it. Like, you know, they, it, it wasn't that they were playing Goofy and, and it worked. It was that they were playing Goofy, it didn't work, and they didn't adapt. And that was weird to me. Yeah. Because, like, I faced a guy who did nothing but sweeps and jumping overheads, which are the, the hardest things to block to new people. So, you know, I can understand why they would do it, I guess, if they have no honor. But... Yeah. At the same time... If I spend the first round blocking all of your all of your sweeps and overheads and beating your ass, maybe don't do it. Do them for the second round. <laughs> and that's the thing that I didn't understand. Is like I I get it. It could be a fluke or whatever. But if 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 it hasn't been working for like two thirds of a round or or rather, uh, not, I, I fractions are not my strong suit. If it hasn't been working for one and a half rounds, then why not try anything else? Like, literally anything yeah. else that I won't expect. <laughs> so that was, that was an experience. I had a person um, rage quit on me, because every time I play a fighting game online, someone rage quits. I know I do. <laughs> <laughs> you, were the, you were that one person <laughs> in, in Dragon Ball. True. But yeah, so... Uh... That one I didn't understand because, you know, with some of those things, like the last time, last time I made a guy rage quit in Street Fighter, I actually was punking on them because they annoyed me. So, you know, I can understand why, why, why they would rage quit. This guy, we had a normal first round and then they just disconnected. Well, that's nifty. Yeah, they, the only thing that happened is that they lost the first round. They could have pulled it back. It, could, it was anyone's game and they rage quit. Interesting. Yeah, I don't get it. <laughs> but yeah, I also had a couple of wood matches with people who knew what they were doing. There were a lot of people who knew more than I do, I do about about what to do and where. And I appreciate I appreciated them because because I was like, well, fuck, <laughs> I'm just outplayed. <laughs> and you know, there's a there's a point where where you're outplayed to the point that you can't do any, you can't literally be angry at it because. It's not really a thing, a thing of like, oh, they're being unfair. No, they just know, know the things better than you do. Like, you can't really yeah. be angry at that. <laughs> yeah. So I had a couple of those matches. I also had a, a good set with a person who um, was pretty fine at zoning and uh, was better, better at close range than I was. So it, it, it turned into a thing where we were both trying to simultaneously get in and out zone each other where I tried to for force us to be at mid-range so I can zone, zone more, and they were trying to force it to be close range because, because they had more, they had a better, better um, tools for it. And that was an interesting set. I don't remember who won, honestly, because I don't fucking care. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So that happened. I also played through... Um... But technically all of the Naruto games, because I ran out of other games to play, mainly. 
And uh, what can I exactly say? Um, I played through the third game in four hours. <laughs> because, Impressive. Yeah. Is, was it supposed to be a long game or is that average? No, it's um, it's a long game, but a lot of it is lore. Like a lot of it is um, is you know just what's what's ha- happening. It's got scenes explaining what what's going on with with the story. So if you ah. just skip them, the game becomes a lot shorter. <laughs> the final boss of that game was a pain in the ass, and I have no uh, I have I have no intention of going back and facing Kabuto again because while I did think about it, and this it, it is a hard battle that I got on, got an S rank on in, on Xbox. <laughs> I'm not sure if I can actually like it, oh, unless I hit I literally don't have anything better to do. I probably won't won't be doing it again just because fucking it took me like three days to do it the first time. And some of the mechanics, like having played four, um and, and it having more more uh, mecha- more metal mechanics makes going back to the early, earlier games hard because you're just like man. I could have actually like done good if I had these crutches. <laughs> no, but yeah. seriously, like if like, I could have done done better if if I could actually like you know switch characters on the fly, like you can like you can in, in four and stuff like that, which was only only intro- introduced in four. But yeah, that um I've been. Trying to uh, play through four, but the thing with four is that like four story, I already finished four story mode because the story mode for four is approximately two hours, and that's by design. Like that, that, that genuinely is supposed to be how long the story mode is. <laughs> ah. And then it has the RPG because um, the the story modes used to be longer because the, it used to be like this light RPG thing that that uh, the way it was told, and. Those, uh, the story mode and the RPG parts of the game got separated. So now you have the story mode, which is just going through the going through the story of of the ending of Naruto, and then the RPG mode is like their own filler arc that they came up with. Probably I don't know. I see. And then aside from that, there's a third third RPG mode that that was DLC, so I didn't hadn't played it before, which is just the um their take on the Boruto movie, which like. I've I've been struggling to get through because I hate Boruto. Like Naruto, right. I, Naruto I can stomach. Boruto is too much. Boruto is too much <laughs> of a little shit. I mean, that's partially like Naruto I can stomach when I skip like ninety percent of his cutscenes. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> but like Boruto is legitimately like I don't I don't know. Like there was. It's simultaneously t- simultaneously a thing where like it 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 doesn't deviate enough from from the original for me to to like it as a separate thing, but the the, the parts where it deviates are bad, in my opinion. Because mm. it's like oh, Boruto's uh, the parents aren't dead, he just has daddy issues. Yay! How original. Yeah. And like it, instead of loving ramen, he loves burgers. I do enjoy a good burger myself, so I can't blame it. And what what else was the big difference? The differences that they showed. Like I I watched the first like hundred episodes of that show because my mom wanted to, and after that I just told her no. <laughs> and I, I don't like. <laughs> oh, like this was shortly after we we finished watching Shippuden, and I was like. Okay, Naruto, whatever. Like I, I can be nostalgic for Naruto, and I kind of like like it because I, I don't know. The, the world is interesting, even if even if like the protagonists are bad, the world is at least interesting in a way. Yeah. But like, I don't really want to go through the same story as as part one of Naruto, but but kind of worse because there's more peace because because of what happened in Naruto. <laughs> Like it's it's either it's either there is peace because because Naruto happened or fucking aliens, ancient aliens. So. Well, yeah, okay. Yes. Spoilers for Naruto, I guess, but yes, that that's how that's how Naruto ends. Ancient aliens. I'm not sure if that makes total sense or no sense. I mean, the thing is, since Naruto 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 four is like two hours, not even that. I can I could probably like. 
I could probably actually count how long it is if you want, because the game gives you an estimate of, of all of the cutscenes and the gameplay parts together. Yeah. But, yeah, we could do a playthrough of that, and I, I can just fill you in on the lore stuff, so you can fucking bask in the glory that is ancient aliens for some fucking reason. I hate it. <laughs> like, the, the, there was a part of Naruto that I can say, hey, the show isn't great, but it's fine. It's good. Like, it, I, I'm, I'm okay with it. It's not, like, great. But I can enjoy parts of this, and that that was yeah. like that was like to the to the to the exam of part one, then a big skip, the the first like I don't know, the first part of Shippuden is kind of bad. The middle is good, like the the Akatsuki arc is good, and then yeah, that's that's it. In Shippuden, the Akatsuki arc is good, and then everything else kind of sucks. <laughs> but it but it sucks more the deeper you go with the, with the series. Like there, there was only one moment near the ending of the of the story that was good, and it was just a callback to to um the first fight in the series. That's it. Yeah. But yeah. So. Yeah, <laughs> Naruto exists. It certainly does. Then what else did I do when it comes to video games? Not much. I've been logging into Smite every day and playing one one game just to get all of the their birthday stuff, but not all of it. I don't need any more uh, like boosters. I have enough. <laughs> but I, I'm fine with get, getting the like fan art stuff because whatever, it's free. Yeah. And that, that may be all for video games, or at least the, the stuff that wasn't recorded. Then, let's see. I did draw some things. So, I figured out how to do textures and stuff. I forget if I, if I mentioned this last week, because it wasn't this week. That was technically last week. But I did figure out how to do textures and stuff with my drawing software. Which was something that I that if you remember I said that I missed from my drawings. So Yeah. So I went back and for a trial trial thing, uh I tried to make the the Zeni the, the Zenyara I I freaking by my last take on not just Zenyara. I tried yeah. to make it look better. So let me see if I can post it. Let, let's see if it loads. <laughs> So yeah. Yeah, there it is. In art. Yeah, yeah. Y you did post this the other a week, I think. I think. No, I posted it a while back. Be because, or, but but yeah, that was the other version. And this, this I I updated with, te with textures, which you couldn't, you probably can't see when it's zoomed out. <laughs> I can't tell. But yeah, and then I also made the captioned version because I didn't didn't do it last time. Ah. Then let's see if I can find it. There it is. I also read you Doctor Mood because, whatever. It it was a bit flat that drawing. So yeah. <laughs> I think it turned out all right. And then I also made myself a new avatar because I've been fucking changing them every second day. <laughs> Hopefully I'll <laughs> stick with this one. It seems fine. Like it, out, of, out of the recent batch, it seems the best. Let's see. Oh yeah, I don't need to do that. I can just copy a link. There we go. Yeah. I posted that one in logos. What what'd you put in logos? Eh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta jump all over the Discord. Yeah, I yeah. like that. Thanks. So yeah, and with the with the the avatar for me and the Doctor Mood, <clears throat> my my voice is giving out. So <laughs> With yeah. with my avatar and Doctor Mood, I also made the um the line work 
not be black because I'm, I'm trying stuff out. And it, I don't know if it works. What do you think? I think it worked on your avatar well. Let me zoom back up to Dr. Mood. I feel like his face kind of gets lost without the dark lines, though. Yeah, I tried to make things, things dark, or I, I tried to make the lines dark, but, but I... I... I forgot about how dark the the green on his shirt is. I didn't want them want them blending together. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's a that's a thing that I have to consider going forward. But hey, that, that's why that, that's why it's a process. Yeah. So yeah, that and then um, what else? Well, for my birthday, my family took, took me back to the zoo. The same zoo we went, to, we went to last time. Right. And, um, let's see if anything of particular note happened. Well, the animals, uh, how do I put, put this? The animals acted weirdly, weirdly enough to uh, to make my mom ask what's up with it because um, there is this uh, there's a span for white lions that they have where there's this dome that you can go go um, there's a dome in the middle of the of their of their pen that you can go inside and then um, you can look at look at the lions closer mm. and the the lions. Um, like once we went in, into the dome, the, li the lions um pretty well just lied down on on my on both sides of mine, which wouldn't be weird, but because you know whatever people are there. The weird part was when when we left, uh, other pe other people ca came to use it, so we we had to leave. When we left, the lions left too, and that's the weird part. Because <laughs> yeah. like you know, the freaking the lions no notice pe people in 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 the in the dome. They'll probably go over there because there's people in the dome. And why are there people in the dome? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Good questions. Yeah. I also got to see red pandas. They were cute. Nice. One of, one of them... Yeah. They had these little, like, houses. And one, one of them did parkour. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. I didn't think like I I didn't think that it that they they could be, because they they look so like plump. It I I I didn't think that they they would have the like strength or whatever. I don't I don't know to just like decide. Hey, I'm gonna cl climb on the top of this building and then just from the from the door just cl grab the the top of the building and just hop up like like the the thing was moving like fucking Spider Man. Yeah. Somehow. <laughs> Spider Man has been hit. Spider Man has been secretly injected with red panda DNA all all this time. <laughs> by the radio, by the radioactive spider. True. Uh, but yeah. Did I do anything else? Hmm. I don't believe I did. So, I guess <laughs> I don't know. We can we can uh, bring up the topic that we skipped last week because Abby wasn't wasn't there. Even even though the reason we skipped it was because Abby wasn't there. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of awkward to you know say hey let's skip this topic because that's something Alex would have more expertise in, and then be like you know now that Alex still isn't here let's talk about that uh, one topic that we decided not to talk about because he was absent. Yeah. Trying to see if if there's any anything any particularly big topic. Right. Pad for time. Pad for time. Yeah. We can we can we can discuss Will Smith. Fucking. Do we, I do don't want to discuss Will Smith. 
Wat zit er dan in een kubaster to to Chris Rock? <laughs> in 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 into a, into the C4 ring. Seems like the Oscars went a little over budget this year. I'd yeah. say though. I mean, it did explain why there was a, a ring in, in the middle of the podium, though. Or whatever. <laughs> all right, I, I have one meme saved, but it, it only makes sense if W is here, because it, it features all of his favorite things. What are all of the severe things? It's a it's a picture of Sasuke Uchiha holding a copy of Morbius. Ah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm trying to find something. <laughs> uh, let's see. I feel like I remember something interesting. Which is probably a bad, bad, bad um, thing if I remember, remember, remember something freaking interesting, but I don't know what that is. <laughs> hmm. I don't know. Pink. Do you know any topics? While I while I search for topics as well. Uh, not off the top of my head. WrestleMania happens today and tomorrow because ah. it's a two-day event. Like, is the standard for today or, I guess, for the modern era? Yeah. Oh, uh, freaking. It's going to be real, real weird when Logan Paul makes his entrance and then Will Smith comes out of the ring and chokes him to to hell. <laughs> <laughs> makes, his, makes his wrestling debut. I mean, he he already showed that he can, he can do it. He did he did fucking lock lock um lock Chris Rock in, into the Billy Goat's curse, I guess. I, I couldn't come up with with a stupid looking uh, submission fast enough. <laughs> what was what was Paige's old finish called? The Page PTO. Turner? Oh no, yeah, the no PTO. no the submission one. Yeah, Paige the, Turner was bad, but uh, the the PTO that was that was stupid. I mean, wasn't it just like the um, wasn't it just an octopus lock? Uh, no, it was. Uh, I, I, I don't remember what the hold was, but if I recall correctly, she kind of hooks the legs in like a sharpshooter position. But she's also got them in more of a camel clutch type situation, but she's hooking the arms like the, uh, uh, like in a butterfly lock or that glam slam position. And what, what is, what is, what is that supposed to stretch? The stomach, I guess? This is something. And it, it, it looks awkward. It looks terrible for television. And if the person taps out, it looks even worse because like, they need to make Their make hands that are obviously tied. Yeah, no, no. They so they need I, to I they need to make that the head real hard. They they need to make that make their hands uh, free real quick to tap. Right. Hmm. I don't remember what what other th things are actually happening aside from Logan Logan Paul and and his dad the Miz. And his dad the Miz. Oh yeah, the fucking Stardust returns today or tomorrow. Stardust, yeah. Everyone's favorite wrestler, Stardust. It's a shame that WrestleMania didn't happen on the first, so he totally could have come out as Stardust, and it would have yeah. been the greatest April Fool's joke ever. And they should have, they should have paid. Um, I was going to sh for a second. I fucking forgot that Dusty's dead. I was going to say, <laughs> I was going to say that they should, they should, they should have brought out Dusty as Stardust. <laughs> oh shit
So yeah. I I guess nothing interesting in wrestling. <laughs> not not quite. Those those are the the big things, you know. Just the potential of Cody Rhodes and Logan Paul and the Miz for some reason. Oh yeah, the friend is back. The friend. Yes. You, I hope not. The friend Bay Wyatt. <laughs> he is in like Dallas at the moment, so you know he he might be making his grand return today. That would suck ass, but I'm gonna cross uh, my fingers gonna... and hope he does. Yeah, you cut out. Uh, when did I cut out? Um, you said that that would suck ass, and that you wouldn't cross your <laughs> fingers or something like that. I was saying, I hope it doesn't happen, and I'm crossing my fingers that it won't. No, but then then who who will be spooky? Stardust. <laughs> I guess. I, I guess it depends. Do they, do they give um? Do they give do they, do they give Cody the, the makeover that uh, freaking Dustin got got in like the nineties? <laughs> but it's, instead of Stardust or anything like that he'll just be the, the wrestler formerly known as Rhodes <laughs> that's good I like it <laughs> and then, then you reveal that they actually did tra- trademark his name and it's, Co- it's just Cody <laughs> <laughs> oh shit But yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to remember what other matches there are. But I, I I'm honestly trying drawing a blank because my brain is just like, okay, the new day, the new day is there. The new day is not not going to not be there because they've been there for the past ten years. Why is that gimmick yeah. not fucking dead? Yeah. Uh, new day will be facing off against. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it'll just be Seamus and Ridge Holland, but it could also be Butch as well. Y- you you know Butch. Everybody loves Butch. Yes. That, that's that's Ridge's brother, Butch Holland. Yeah. I hope a WWE writer comes upon this podcast and find and finds inspiration. <laughs> Well, I'm confident they will. That those are our strongest viewers. Yeah. Uh, Edge will face AJ Styles tonight, so that's gonna be cool. They they will battle for who has the longer hair. <laughs> it's a hair versus hair match. If if that AJ cool. if AJ Styles loses, he has to go back using to he has to go back to using I am I am. <laughs> That'd be cool if he could come out to one of his TNA songs. Like Edge was able to come back out with the Brew theme a few months ago. But yeah, but that's so, owned by WWE, isn't it? That that is owned by WWE. But l- let's be honest, it's not like WWE doesn't already mostly own TNA anyway. Yeah, and I mean they they could like they, they could probably license out I am I am for like five dollars. Yeah. Mickey James came out to her hardcore country song at the Rumble, so no reason why AJ couldn't come out to one of his impact songs. Yeah. And and I mean our truth has been coming out to his TNA song for a while. So <laughs> I think that killed Pink. Everything's killing me today. I see. I've got a nasty scratch in the back of my throat and it won't go away. Ah, that's not nice. No. Did you try a band-aid? You know, I considered it, but I couldn't figure out how I'd get back there. <laughs> Just swallow a, a bundle of, of band-aids, forehead. <laughs> uh I feel like there's a match. Oh yeah, the 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 unification match. Do you think after Roman wins, he will go after the United States title to unify that that fit the universal title too? Yeah, he's gonna unify all the belts. It's just gonna be one singular belt, the Roman belt. Yes, 
I mean, the the weird part will be when when he goes after the Raw and SmackDown Women's titles. <laughs> Especially since there's no mixed gender match- matches anymore. But you know, he'll find a way. Yeah, he'll find a way. It'll it'll work out. He he'll. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I don't, I don't know how mad I would be if if they did a thing where where Roman wins wins the women's title due to like a, a technicality or something. Like they, they they don't actually have a have a fight. It just has to be resented to Roman for some reason, right? And then and then the women complain that it, it's bullshit because it is. <laughs> and then and then they make a women's title. It doesn't look look like shit. Yeah, of course, all their belts look like trash nowadays. So I don't have high hopes for that. That's true. All all of them look the same, but they're just different flavors. Yeah, and not only do they do they look the same, but but the but the basic design is not great. So. Yeah. Like the, the the new WWE Championship was fine after the spinner belt because we were really used to the spinner belt, but like it's been it's been ten years of this belt too, more more or less, and it's like every belt be, being it is uh, too much. Yeah. <laughs> like I I. I I would go as far as, as far as to say that the fucking the the quor- the quarters were better because at least it was different. You're not wrong there. What if Ah oh, shit. They they should bring me the million dollar championship, but instead instead of, you know, it it being like solid gold and, and in the shape of money, just have have a like a, a barren belt with fucking hundreds st- stapled onto it. <laughs> that that'd be funny. That, that's 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 for when you when you unify the million dollar dollar in the hardcore championships. Because <laughs> the, the, that is the hardcore title like aesthetic. Yeah, you're not wrong there. Oh, uh, but yeah, I still haven't found any like noteworthy news, by the way. Because shit has, like, I guess April 1st slowed down everything to the point point where you can't find shit. Good. Right. And even if you could find some news, yesterday was April 1st, so it's not like that was accurate news anyway. I mean, with some comp- companies, it's it's a little of column A and a little of column, column B. Because, like, Arika or Arika did, did an update on a game that they uh, they announced on April 1st a couple of years back. And there was actual gameplay this time. And considering Finding EX Layer was of an April Fool's joke that, that you can buy now, that game might also actually be in development. Interesting. So, like, that, that's one of those things where, like, yeah, it's an April Fool's joke, but that, that's because they're not, like, really developing it actively, even though they kind of are. It's just slow. It's on the back burner. Yeah. Oh boy, here's a, I guess here's a topic that I just found. I don't, I'm going to read this out correctly because it, it, it has a, a typo that makes it grammarly incorrect. Do you think WWE should start becoming less PG and start to go back to how they were before, the, before in the Attitude Era? Yes. I, my question is, to what extent? Like, if you go back to, <laughs> if you go back to ruthless aggression, I think that could work. Yeah, absolutely. Like, Rudis' aggression would, would probably work, work wonders because we've been so sweet, squeaky clean for so long. Mm-hmm. Attitude Era, I'm not sure because, like, when, when, I, when I think of the, like, when, when I think of the main differences between the Attitude Era and Rudis' aggression, it was just, like, people throwing pots at each other, like, actual potted plants at each, at each other, and, like, we, we went in, in barely a bikini. Yep. And the first one may fly, no pun intended. The second one, <laughs> the second one, I don't think would fly on on television today. No, no. And like it, it that... there's there's no need for that kind of stuff. But yeah. pushing the envelope, just even a teensy weensy bit nowadays, I, I'm perfectly fine with that. If they 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 have a PG rating, they just go so far. There's plenty of stuff you can get away with with the PG rating, but they don't bother. 
even attempting to do that most of the time. So there's still plenty of options that they have at their disposal. They just don't really go all out like they used to. But yeah, because we need we need to pipe in electricity sounds, so you know that that uh, Sami Zayn is getting electrocuted. Yeah. Apparently, apparently, Balor is not on the card. Finn Balor continues to be in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> Finn Balor continues to wonder why he ever signed a contract extension. Yeah. We have uh, Balor is the United States champion right now, and Ricochet is the Intercontinental champion, if I'm not mistaken. And they couldn't fit either of those guys on the WrestleMania card for some reason. I mean, the, the U.S. title is just not um, prestigious enough, obviously. Did they, did they make a new U.S. title? They did. Okay, then, I, then, then, then what, what I said, but unironically. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking hell. Yeah, like, I don't... I, I haven't watched WWE in... More more years than I actually watched WWE for probably. Uh, <laughs> I, I think I've already stopped by like 2013. No, not 2013 because yeah, uh, maybe 2013. I don't remember. No, it would have been 15 or so. So yeah, that's seven years. <laughs> yeah. So I don't I don't exactly know how they they do stuff, but I still get to see like. You know, I still see the highlights sometimes, or I I still watch people, or still um like hear people's opinions on what what's being done. And it, it sounds like nothing. Like when when W talks about the idea, the the things that they present, it's like, hey, nothing. Also, Roman Reigns. <laughs> That's surprisingly accurate. Like it's it's either nothing, Roman Reigns, or the women's division, which is which is also nothing. Charlotte Fa Flair. Or Sasha Binks. Yep. And then the cue, cue the clip of you of of uh, WWE saying Misa gonna go over. Misa gonna give him big heat. <laughs> but yeah, freaking like you know, the women's division. I don't I don't know because the last time I I saw the women's division, it was still called they they were still called divas. So, you know, mm -hmm. a while ago. <laughs> and, like, the mid-card being shit is sad because that's where most of the people are. Very true. Like, he, like I'd say that, um, that, like, the, uh, the, the, freaking, the age of terror of the Triple H in the early 2000s and, and like, Steve Austin and The Rock notwithstanding, the, <laughs> the main event scene used to be, used to have more than two people. Used to. Yeah. Yeah. Not anymore. And then even 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 when there were more than two people, it was like seven. So, you know, most of the card is like either mid card or, or jobs. Jobbing guys. Yeah. And it it seems like they're either like it, the the people who are not supposed to be the stars are are not given anything to work with. Mm-hmm. And the people who like and there's also like a, an upper echelon of those people like Balor who just don't get to work. <laughs> just yeah. sit, sit at home and not wrestle and get paid. Yep. Yep. And like, I don't, on one hand, it sucks because they're not being utilized. On the other, if I were in Balor's place, I'd be like, hey, yeah, <laughs> I don't get to work and they still pay me. <laughs> I mean, when like honestly, if if Balor wants to wants to wrestle and shit, I would honestly just ask like Vince to do a gimmick where he goes back to Japan for like a month to work under under the Prince David name, and and then they do like a, a Japanese invasion or something, <laughs> just get get yeah, people loaned yeah. out. Cause like the the last time I was actually like hyped for a match was when when Liger came in, and Liger's like five hundred years old. Yeah. But still, it was it was someone who we who we haven't seen in a while, <laughs> and that was in NXT. Yes, it was. 
I kind of wish they didn't waste Liger on, on NXT. Like, you know. <laughs> it would have been... It's interesting that they did. Like, that seems like a thing where, where like, the, like, you know... I get, I guess, get, guess in the West, people don't really know Liger, Liger as much. But like he was in WCW, you can you can work yeah. off of that. He could have just done a run in in, in, the, in the Royal Rumble. People would have popped. Probably. Uh, but yeah. So I, I guess as someone who actually watches the product, what's going on that I haven't touched upon? <laughs> Maybe even stuff what that I have. What's going on that you haven't touched upon? Um. Well, let's see. Sami Zayn will be facing off against Johnny Knoxville because reasons. And Sami Sami Zayn that... is fighting Johnny Knoxville because Johnny Knoxville won't, is uh, willing to take bumps. <laughs> is he though? Um... I don't know. Outside of the big Brock and uh, Roman match, I I suppose we have Bianca Belair, who won the Elimination Chamber, earns the right to face Becky Lynch for her women's title. And this is kind of a stealth, long play type of storyline here, because... Bianca dropped the belt initially to Becky Lynch at SummerSlam of this year when she had won the title at WrestleMania of last year. So it's kind of cool to see the, that they kind of maintained a track on her as she won the previous WrestleMania, lost the title, and got lost in the shuffle, and then is now back in the main event of WrestleMania to face a prior winner of a WrestleMania main event. They, uh... They, they're they both the, uh... As far as I'm aware, the only two women to ever win a WrestleMania main event. So, you know, that's cool. Yeah. I like it. I can get down with that. Uh, I, I didn't really like all the build-up they had going into it, because uh, they kind of lost me in some situations, but it's been a lot better than, uh... Probably anything else regarding champions that aren't named Brock Lesnar or Roman Reigns. Uh, I legit kept forgetting who won the Rumble leading up into this WrestleMania, and then I remembered, oh yeah, Ronda Rousey's alive somehow. Odd. <laughs> so, so uh, when when is when is the blow blow off match for for the feud feud where uh, where, where Bianca braids her hair hairs into cat size? That would be or, interesting. Is that the name of the whip I'm thinking of? It's a cat of nine tails. Yeah, cat of nine tails. <laughs> I mean, like she, she had her gimmick is her hair. She should use it. Give give her hardcore matches where where she can whip people and shit. Dude, that'd be awesome. <laughs> hardcore matches, but the only weapon she uses is her hair. Yeah, like that's. Uh, like, like you know, that, that 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 that's the that's the natural progression of her gimmick. Just make make her be like be like a freaking tough SOB. Like make, just make, make package Bianca better a stone cold. <laughs> but with hair. That would be awesome. I mean did, have have we had a, a female stone cold? I don't think we have. The closest like... we got to female stone cold was Becky Lynch back in twenty eighteen ish, I want to say, or twenty eighteen, twenty nineteen, somewhere around there, when she first started to initially go by the moniker of the man. But since then and prior or before, uh never really had any such equivalent that I'm aware of. And I, and I, I was—I'm assuming she didn't, she didn't go around clipping people off. No, nah, that kind of wasn't allowed. <laughs> Except for the games, where even the Miz does it. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, I love it. That's—that's that, that's the the Miz's new finisher. He he flips the bird and gets banned. <laughs> Uh, 
Yeah, and the, the Brock Roman match is like you know it, it's it's one of those things that like I, I don't like either of these people in the match. So even even though they like I hear that they have actually been doing doing a good build and 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 and, and all of that, I can't force myself to actually care. <laughs> yeah, understandable. I think it's wild that this is like the third time we're getting Brock and Roman, maybe even fourth time in the main event. In the past week. In in the past week feels like it almost. They, they they've gone one and one quite a significant amount of times here. I don't know. I I'm sure it'll be a good match because to my immediate recollection, I feel like Roman and Brock have always put on good matches together. Well, what we need to do now is if someone needs to run run over Roman, I mean in, in kayfabe, someone needs to run over Roman with a car, and then they like two weeks from now they need to reveal it was it was the Rock, and then when he the the then when when he gets confronted, he says, "I did it for the Brock." I did it for the Brock. And it, and it's the start of the new tech team, the Rock and Brock connection. I love it. So I mean, somebody take that idea and run with it. That needs to happen. I'm trying to imagine, imagine, imagine like an F5 in into people or a rock bottom. Like, <laughs> fucking yeah, that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not impossible, but that would be hard to pull off. I mean, it's it's more possible than a rock, rock bottom into F5. So absolutely. Uh, or, or or they or they do a combine combine like this to mission finisher where Brock locks in the Kimura and the Rock locks in the sharpshooter. <laughs> that's that's easier to pull off. Yeah, probably. Uh, but yeah. I don't. I don't think we really discussed the the freaking the, the Miz and his son match. The Miz and his son match. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, it... I I don't remember if there's a canonical reason as to why it's Logan Paul teaming with the Miz. Because the I'm Miz sure is trustworthy. They did something to establish it, but I just no, don't remember. The, the canonical reason for why why the Miz is in, in this in this match is because the Miz won't say no if you ask him. Hey, do you want to carry Logan Paul? <laughs> Uh, and and the, 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 aren't they going up against the Mysterios? Yes, they are. All right. I, just, I was going. Paul actually stands a chance at not being the worst part of that match. It's scary. I mean, that's true. On the other, on, on the other hand, you have to you have to consider Logan Paul. Stand, stand, like there's a chance that Logan Paul may die because of the Tiger faint kick. So <laughs> there's always a chance. You never know. It could happen. Like he, you know, he he might have wanted wanted to reconsider. <laughs> yeah, honestly, four people are in this match. Only one of them has killed a man this far in his career. Got to be got to be something you need to take into consideration. <laughs> what, if, what if after after the greatest greatest mask of all time gimmick, Ray just starts to freaking quoting how he's killed a man and call, calling him some gangster. <laughs> uh, they they give him like Man, a, they, awesome. they they give him a new Spanish rap like team. <laughs> <laughs> and the team will be made by Conan. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think when is Seth Rollins taking on the Waluigi gimmick? He already is. Well, what when is he leaning into it more? Tonight, hopefully. We need as much Waluigi in this world as we can get. What if? Uh, what, what if? What, what if? Uh, what, what if you go and watch the the Super Mario movie and and Seth Rollins is like Seth Rollins is the only live action actor and he's Waluigi. <laughs> It's all it's all CG except for Waluigi. 
and they like do they do the real, the like creepy close ups from the nineties to to make right. it to 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 make it obvious that he's real. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. I suppose we could talk about the Steiners. Yeah, they they went into the Hall of Fame. I actually did not watch the Hall of Fame ceremony last night. I figured I would catch it in the morning, but I didn't get around to doing that either. So, I, I just, just haven't seen it yet. And, I mean, why would I want to? It's the Undertaker going into the Hall of Fame. I hate that guy. He owes you five bucks. <laughs> he owes me five bucks. I bought him a chocolate milk once. You didn't even thank me. Rather unbelievable. When you were a kid, he, he stole your like he stole your um your your plastic bicycle your your plastic bike <laughs> motorbike. Even worse, it was a tricycle. Ah. And never. <laughs> but he was already like thirty. <laughs> and he was riding riding on on a, on a tricycle made for like seven year olds. Right? It was the worst. Uh, that, I, also, I also liked it. Um, I think I don't remember whose post it was. That, that there's a third bottle called Destruction. But we know who it is. Yeah. Like, we, we know who Destruction is. It's Fred Durst. <laughs> like, it obviously... Why do you think Limp Bizkit licensed out the music to WWE? Why do you think he was in, in Here Comes the Pain? Destruction is oh, Durst. My... Yeah, you're starting to make a lot of sense here. And I'm not comfortable with it. <laughs> and this is how conspiracy theories are formed. <laughs> uh, for, for, for this year's... Uh, DLC. They actually genuinely should have put put like if they wanted to have a have a DLC with um with with the celebrities, then then the DLC genuinely should have, should have been like fucking Logan Paul, Machine Gun Kelly, Fred Durst, and I don't know who the fourth one would be. Robocop. I mean, I think all those guys are the DLC except for uh, Limp Bizkit guy, Fred Durst. Yeah, they they are. It, it it's them. It's Van Dam. I think is in the same DLC and someone yeah. else. I don't know who else. Me either. It may be an actual wrestler that I just don't know about. Could be. Could be. But yeah. Uh, so yeah, that, that that DLC is is an idea. <laughs> it certainly is. It's it's happening. It's a yeah. set in stone at this point. There's no turning back. No matter how much we would like them to. Doesn't doesn't matter if we're getting you manga. It's worth it. But we're not getting Tajeri. No, unfortunately. All of Tajeri's moves are in the game though. Like, Except his entrance. Entrance is is in fact in the game. Ah. They've got his entrance, his victory animation, his legit move sets. They've had the buzzsaw in for a few games now, actually. So, I mean, they, yeah. they've had the boss sign, boss sign since forever. It just always looked like shit. Oh, no, 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 no. It was taken out around... Well, it was obviously out in 2011. And I don't think it was brought back until 2K16 or 17 in one of their DLC packs. So we, we don't have the old janky... Computer animated buzzsaw kick anymore, RIP. But we do have the buzzsaw kick. That's nice. I think we I also just, have the tarantula. I saw, I, I I saw a great idea. So you know how Seth's opponent is technically not announced, even though everybody knows it's 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 Stardust. Yeah. Yeah. So, I just saw saw a post. Someone said, "What if?" So that's all come, it comes out. They're like, who is it going to be? Who, who, who is this opponent going to be? It's the fucking Undertaker. <laughs> <laughs> that actually kind of be awesome. But, but, but if, if he does it, then he, like, the, the, the gimmick went into Hall of Fame. He should come out as American Badass. Yeah! 
Like they, they should make it as much of a gimmick match as they can, because because Taker can't go anymore. Mm-hmm. So just like I don't know, fucking have Undertaker tie tie a chain chain around fucking uh, Rollins's neck with with Rollins, Rollins holding it, so he won't actually suffocate, and then just have 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 him slowly pull pull like have him slowly pull him, pull uh, Rollins after the after the bike as as they go through the the entrance ramp or something. Yeah. Uh, watch it. Watch it. Not actually be Cody Rhodes, but it, but like I don't know. Fucking, I don't. I don't. I don't know. That fucking who exists anymore? <laughs> Jamie Noble. Sure, him. I was going to say, <laughs> like I, I was going through my mind, and I'm, I'm like, like okay, what, what stupid dumb, dumbass like jobber can I come up with? And I, and then I go Rico. And I was, I, I went. Wait, if Rico comes out, I would actually pop. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking El Snow comes out. El Snow. Yeah. I mean, here's here's the thing. It could legitimately be anyone. Every wrestler in the wor- world right now is in Dallas right now, right at this yes. very minute. Because if they're not attending WrestleMania, they're attending a, some indie show or convention at the moment. That's yes. how WrestleMania be. Obviously, Seth Rollins will issue his challenge, and CM Punk will come out. Yeah. Even like, in, in, while you're watching watching that, you can you can turn on the AEW thing, and because it's pre-taped, CM Punk is also wrestling there too. <laughs> Like I was going to shout out some some like random Japanese wrestler, but I don't actually watch Japanese wrestling, so all of the people I know were like eighty. <laughs> and like you know, it would have been like it, I would I would I would regardless of the match's quality, I would pop for Mu- for Muda, but like Muda's ninety oh, yeah. or something. <laughs> oh yeah. So I don't think like he, even if he re- like he shouldn't wrestle, and even if he even if he wrestles, he's probably not gonna be good. Probably not, no. So, and that's why they need for the next the next WrestleMania. The main event should be Undertaker and Muda. Truly, a match for the ages. Yeah. With special guest referee, referee Sting. I like it. He he paints his face so it, it's striped too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining Sting with Sting in a, in a striped face paint and no shirt because that's his shirt. That, that's his ref shirt. <laughs> uh, but yeah. I haven't found any, anything else to really discuss. Uh, I mean, I guess if you want, want to talk about a fighting game that's, that's having an open beta right now that, that I haven't played because I don't really care. <laughs> There's that. And what is that? A DNF Duel is a fighting game made made, uh, made by Aiding that's gonna come out in like a couple months. I don't remember. It's um it's a fighting game version of yeah, an MMO. Like it's it's a fighting it's a fighting game for an MMO and it features the the the, the, the classes as characters. Ah. And they're having an open beta right now. And I could be playing it. But here's the thing: there is no training mode in the beta. You you either you either swim or sink. And considering this is a, this is the second open beta, if you get into the game, you'll probably fucking die. Like you, you'll get you get <laughs> you'll get like zero zero to one hundred, fucking touch of death that immediate immediately. And especially because, because, from what I understand, the the inputs for the game are are very easy, and the game is also not particularly built to like it's not um it's not going with the current uh, current trend of making the game like very grounded and stuff. So yeah. pe- so people will just fucking start doing Marvel combos on you because this is the, this is from the people who made Marvel, by the way. <laughs> ah. Yeah. So people will just start doing Marvel combos on you, and you don't know what's going on because there's no training mode. For you to test out the buttons. Sounds like a good time. Yeah. 
Like from what I understand, it's actually a fun game if you can give it a go. But I I don't want to. <laughs> like the 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 fucking the the thing of actually like you know having to hunt hunt down a move list for the character and then not being able to test it out and stuff like that before before trying to fight against people is a big big enough to me or from me I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, aside from that, like, I don't see many, many actual, like, video game news. Funny enough, a, a good, good amount of fighting game news, for some reason. <laughs> it's WrestleMania season. They're, they're getting into my action as well. Yeah. Rugal from KOF will be Seth's opponent. Oh man, I paid good money to see that. Uh, they, you know they announced the character for free, for the new game, and one of the, like the the free up, up upgrade also comes with a mode that that which is which has AI designed to be fucking broken, because that's what hmm. that's what KOF is known for 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 the old games having really like uh, unfair boss AI. So they so they they made a made a uh mo, uh modern. The, the, they made a, a new game and it's balanced like you would expect from a modern game and then also th there's this update and it, it it allows you to go through go through um i don't know if if, if it's like an arcade mode or not but it, it will let you fight a boss ai that was designed like it's 1998 oh yeah that doesn't sound fun i mean it's funny in the way that like if 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 um you played a lot of kof growing up then it will be nostalgic because the AI will just fucking input feed you within like, like the, the AI will input you before you start inputting the move. Uh huh. Like the uh, the announcement trailer was um because the, the the in the old game where Rugal was the boss, he's very known. He's well known for a lot for a lot of things with with input reading, but one of them is how he just stops all of your moves with with genocide cutter, which is like this um. It's this jumping kick move that he does. So for his announced announcement trailer for for the new game, when when they announced the the new boss mode, they just did a super cut of him genocide countering everyone. Oh yeah, <laughs> and then that's because that's that's gonna be your experience for most of it, probably. We'll see. <laughs> but yeah, I mean. I'm looking forward to the update. I don't even own the game, <laughs> but I'm looking forward to the to the to the update because that sounds like well, it doesn't sound like fun necessarily. It sounds like for one good content, like we we can make we can make a video where I fucking yell for five hours again out of that because <laughs> the W W has already said that he's not not gonna be attempting that. I will. Like I I need to know. But I'd be down for it. Yeah. But as all, but I'm also glad because Rugal hasn't been in the game since 2002, so, and he's oh. one of the he's one of the characters I play, which also which also means that I am banned from Mexico, by the way. Because <laughs> like Rugal, Rugal in the old games was um like it, choosing Rugal in the old games was the I want to get beaten up button, more or less. Like there there were arcades in um. In Latin America, where the the KOF um the KOF machines had notes um no notes on top of them like choosing Rugal is forbidden. So yeah, yeah. If I remember correctly, at least a couple of people got stabbed over Rugal. Oh, I yeah. I don't know how to take that. <laughs> Latin America takes fighting games seriously, or KOF specifically seriously. It's it's KOF, it's Dragon Ball, it's Saint Seiya. From what I understand, those are those are the founding blocks of Latin America, or at least Mexico, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> hey. 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 So, there we go. 
Yes. Is anything coming out on your channel this week? Uh, I have no idea. All right. Then I guess you can continue with your week or whatever. Start with your week, I guess. Oh, uh, well, I've played a lot of Elden Ring, played a bit of Warmer 3. All right. I uh, yeah. missed SmackDown. <laughs> That's about all there is to it, I guess. You missed SmackDown? Yeah, the, I missed the pre uh, WrestleMania SmackDown. How about that shit? Unbelievable. And you call yourself a real AEW fan? Yeah. Right? What a nerd, this guy. You, mi you missed the triple threat between and Angel Garza and Humberto Carrillo and, uh, oh, and, uh, wh what's his name? The, they're, the finally having guy. Those two, they're finally having those two break up? <laughs> no, it was, uh, they want Ricochet to be the new baby face, top baby face, so they're doing the old rock type, uh, build, where now they're putting him in all these handicap matches. Oh. That's yeah, stupid. Like, I mean, logically speaking, when you have a match where it's two heels are both contenders for a title, the resolution of the match is the heels turn on each other, right? Because the heels don't have the moral character for either one of them to let the other take the title. Uh huh. Yeah. <sighs> I think that's pretty much my week. All right. Just a lot of games that I've either already talked about before or uh, games that I probably shouldn't talk about, I guess. Say that like you're playing something dirty over there. <laughs> I'm Elden playing Ring. Elden Ring. Apparently yeah. that is dirty. <laughs> Elden Ring is secretly a hentai game. Just didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I will say real quick, I, I don't know what the fuck happened, but last night I ran into a boss that was a giant constellation with the head of a beetle. Ah. Capri. Uh -huh. I was, he, like, it, it, it was a constellation. It was made out of stars. I was very confused. And you know where you find it? Yeah. Underground. I was about to say underground. <laughs> how how under, underground are we speaking? Like, is it in a dungeon or do you have to fucking dig? Uh, I'm talking like there is an elevator you can find that takes you deep, 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 deep beneath the world to some lost city of weird mud people. And I guess that is. I, I've not entirely figured out the lore just yet, because that's how Souls games work. You tend to not figure the lore out until the end of the game. But they apparently, the people of that city did something that damned them to be trapped underneath the earth, and with it, they took their own night sky. Which means that they somehow trapped some of the stars with them beneath the earth. I see. Interesting. Yeah. And I'm I'm halfway curious if there's, I'll I'll just say this also real quick just because hey fan theories are stupid and fun. I have my own theory that there's going to be war between the stars and the big ass glowing tree, because you see the big ass glowing tree glows so brightly that you can't see the stars at night in Elden Ring when you're on the surface. Ah, the only way you can see the the only way you can see the stars is by going underground into the trapped cities. So that's I mean, what I'm is. thinking. I. Oh no, that was, that, was, that was it. I mean, I mean, the Mudmen are, are the the natural uh, like en enemies of the of the the Birdmen. So that that is true. And you know, there's a, a bunch of giant birds with skulls for faces up there near one of the trees. So yeah, we need we need to, we need to send this theory to George R. R. Martin to make sure that it's true. Yeah. 
Even though he didn't actually write write the, like he, he wrote the basis for the lore or the world or whatever. But not the actual lore. But you know, let's let's send it to him. He'll know. It seems ambiguous. Yeah. There isn't enough sex in this game for it to be uh written mostly by Germ. I liked how I, I liked how I I saw a post where someone someone asked what if we know uh what what he wrote in Elden Ring. And then someone just just replied, his name. <laughs> yeah. I <laughs> Well that that's that was certainly a uh, a theory running around that he, all the, so many of the major characters have his name, but what he says is he simply named them all similar names because that's the way he just prefers to write names. Which admittedly he does the same thing in Game of Thrones because it's like, ah yes, Tyrion, son of Tywin, and there's also like they've got a nephew that's like Tyleus or something stupid, Bran, who's nephew of Bran. I mean, son that of one Brand. really makes sense. Yeah, son of Brand. There you go. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's that's Germ there for you. A- admittedly, admittedly, honestly, it is a bit more sexual than other Souls games, which does make me wonder if that's Germ's influence. <laughs> is, is there a new emote that that's just cocks out? <laughs> no, but that would be an interesting way to taunt the boss. <laughs> Like, I'm imagining you enter the boss, you go through the boss fog wall, and it just tells you, like, Capriatus, seventh son of the seventh gods, or whatever, the boss health meter forms up, and the main character just unzips, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, another, another working theory that I heard is the, is that George R. R. Martin wrote all, all of the Trifinger butthole <laughs> notes. Uh, he wrote, yeah. all, of, wrote you know, all of them personally. Miyazaki gave him the codes for no clip, so he could just like ignore all the enemies and fly around the game world, planting those everywhere. So that does make sense. But he did, he did he did it in real life. Like he he didn't he didn't put it in the, in the game. He he no clipped into Elden Ring real in real life and put them there personally. <laughs> he did that, but who's been going around putting dog observe dog messages all over the world? Uh, I haven't heard about that meta yet. It, it's, it's it's mostly just been people people complaining about trifling or about hole, which I mean I understand. <laughs> I don't know how I don't know how how many of those that that are around, but you know, for, for, judging by the amount of people complaining, probably a lot. Every Souls game has a has a meme that people repeat onto death. I remember Dark Souls Three had try tongue butthole. The one I did l- actually like in Dark Souls Three was. Uh, People would find skeletons in various poses throughout the Dark Souls 3 world, and they put next to it a message that says, Don't give up, skeleton! Uh, yeah, I've actually been missing out on the messages because I've had to play offline. Oh, uh, yeah. I forgot. Yeah. I am amused, though, that I hear apparently there's a whole thing. Uh, there's loads of, you know, uh, passive wildlife running around in Elden Ring because it's an open world game. Surprise. But. Players can't leave messages titled for any of them. So they're just apparently all called dogs by the player base. Ah. Yeah. They also, uh, did I also tell you guys that in Elden Ring the Pope's a turtle? Yes. Ah. You didn't tell me, but I probably wasn't present when you mentioned it. He's a big friendly turtle. And he teaches you how to cast spells. And, 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 and. And the final battle of Elder, Elder Ring is, is having a fist fight with the with the Turtle Pope. On, on, on in the Mudman Mudman people's church. I would refuse to harm him. Also, he says his legs don't work no more, so that probably wouldn't be an entertaining fist fight. <laughs> but but maybe he's lying. Come here, I'm gonna kick your ass. Uh, the the worst part is I actually do know what the what the what the. What 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 the end what the part around when the ending of Elden Ring is, I won't say, but but I know. Yeah. I know there's like six different endings or something like that. I, I, I don't know the triggered one. I don't know the actual endings. I just know I just know um I I have some a general idea of, of what happens and also uh people's opinion of it, which I won't tell tell either unless you ask me. But like the. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I think I'm at the halfway point through the game because I just went up to the big magic tree and it was like, I want to finish the game. And the big magic tree said, fuck off. And I was like, okay. <laughs> the, big, the big magic tree ate, ate you and you, you got summoned into the, into the inside the Deku tree. That's actually what you want to happen. That's ah. how you become Elden Lord. I see. It's more like it spit me out. So, so, so what, what you're saying is you want, you want to start Oc Ocarina of Time, and that's how you beat Elden Ring. Oh, well, uh, yeah, it's like that, those stupid Skyrim memes where you finish the game and it just starts another game. Yeah. Oh, man. All right, uh, with everyone's favorite game out of the way, uh, yeah, I don't think I recall uh, doing anything else in particular that I have not already been doing for a good while. I do, I, I, now, that, now that I'm thinking about it, I guess I should say I do want to put out a little Warmer 3 video at some point this week, as well as probably a channel, you know, monthly update, just so everybody knows I'm not entirely dead. Uh, oh, I did read, a, I guess I did read a few comics, which, not, I don't think there was anything particularly exciting, but I guess I could just speed through real quick. Uh, I did read, I, I did not know that Doctor Doom had his own set of comics even back in the 60s. And here I thought Marvel trying to give villains their own comics was a new trend. <laughs> and boy, most of those Do Doctor Doom comics actually kind of suck. Yeah, uh, are those, I don't remember how far back you are, uh, I think Doom had his own comics, but in the 70s or somewhere about there, I think he shared a comic with Namor, which was interesting. Yes, I, I have not started reading that, no. Why Namor of all people? Good uh, question. Well, I'd say it's because they're probably at that point the two biggest villains of the Fantastic Four. Though, personally, I've never really liked Namor being an out-and-out -out villain. Yeah. And it's specifically labeled Marvel Villain Team-Up is the name of the comic, which... Again, yeah, like, that's the one. I don't like Namor being labeled an outright villain, and I also don't like the idea of him and Doom teaming up consistently, because I don't think those two <laughs> yeah. work together very well. Yeah. I always like the bit from that old children's comic. The old children's comic that once spawned the Do Not Toot It meme also has a fantastic comic book panel where Dr. Doom goes to Namor and says, We should team up and take over the world. And Namor responds, No, I do not want it. <laughs> uh, either which way, yeah, I, I read those uh, early Doom, which, by the way, even Doom's early comics that he had to him, he had to himself weren't to himself. He had to share them with fucking Kazar. <laughs> Who? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I, if I remember correctly, there was only really three stories he got to have before they pushed him over to Namor. First one is he fights some, he fights the faceless one or whatever, who's basically discounting stereo. Mm. He fights in the second arc. He fights Red Skull, which admittedly it's always amusing to see Doom beat up on Red Skull. And in the third arc, you actually get one of the most important Doom character moments of all time. The third and final character arc for Doom's comic in that one is the one where we see him for the first time start his yearly ritual of fighting the forces of hell to try to save his mother's soul. Uh huh. And it is, let me tell you, it is night and day. Because the first, those other comics, honestly, were just kind of like your usual Stan Lee, just pump it out kind of comics with bad dialogue and this, that, and another. The, the art was terrible. And suddenly they changed artists for that one. They must have changed writers as well. Uh, <laughs> Hank, is Roy Thomas a good writer at some point? Yeah, he pumped up plenty of good stuff back in the day. Is he, does he not really get good until later on in Avengers? Yeah. Because, like, reading his Cap's kooky quartet stuff for Avengers, R Roy Thomas sucks. <laughs> uh, either which way, yeah. It, I don't know what happened, but the, uh, story, the first story where Doom fights to save his mother is fantastic. And it had gorgeous art for the 60s. I don't know what happened. Yeah, I, I think what it was is back then, Roy Thomas wasn't completely working on his own. He was very much uh, kind of headed 
over by Stan Lee because he was the real major successor to Lee. Well, that explains a lot because when I read these early Avengers and such stories by Roy Thomas, I'm thinking, wow, this feels a lot like Stan Lee's writing. Yep, you know? yep. Uh, you could, you could if, say if he wasn't directly involved, Lee was definitely the editor at the time and would have become yes. directly involved anyway. Yes. You could, you could say that Roy Thomas had a Stan Lee. Oh, God. Why would you say that? Why not? Uh. <laughs> Uh, what else did I want to say? Oh, there was one thing. I did read some of the early What If comics. For the most part, they're just very goofy. But I did, one thing that did crack me up is one of the What If comics is... I'm like, get, get ready for this one. This one's a real twist. What if Jane Foster became Thor? <laughs> Unthinkable. So, <laughs> Unbelievable. Who would ever do that? Well, so that one, in the style of a lot of the what-if comics of the time, tries to reimagine a lot of the uh, early Thor stories with Jane Foster instead of... What was Thor's fake human name at that time? Donald Blake. Oh, God, right. So they just trash that identity outright within 10 years, don't they? Absolutely. Yeah. So... I, I think the did... further you get into Kirby's run on Thor, the further away... He takes Thor from Earth entirely. Like, every issue, I don't know that his uh, civilian persona is ever even touched upon. Like, yeah. it's just straight up Thor through and through. Yeah. I, I should probably start reading the Jack Kirby Thor properly at some point. Mm -hmm. The uh, When you go back and read, like, the whatever what, what it was, uh, Tales of Mystery or whatever version of yeah. Thor, which I, re I read several issues of that. Yeah, that's honestly just Thor being Superman. Yep. Like, other than the occasional pop-up of Loki or Enchantress, you completely they completely ignore Thor and Norse mythology altogether. And instead, it's Thor versus the communist radioactive man. It's like, oh, great. Yep. Or Grey Gargoyle. Fucking Grey Gargoyle. <laughs> you know, as a kid, I always got Grey Gar Gargoyle and Dragon Man confused because they both show up at the same point in Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Yeah, they do. And they are, like, aesthetically so similar, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, either that. which way. Either which way. What was I talking about? I was saying something about But what I wanted to say about the Jane Foster Thor, for one thing, most of the what-ifs, this is always the classic thing about Marvel and what-ifs, so many of the what-ifs are used as a way of saying, hey, be happy with the, what you got, fuckers, right? Yeah, yeah. Because the what-if stories always end with, well, things actually end up going worse than they do in the main universe, so you should uh -huh. like the way you got it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But J the Jane Foster one actually surprisingly does not end this w in that way, which must be one of the only ten what-ifs that end that way. The only, like, disappointment that the story makes out is that because Jane Foster is so busy being Thor, she never gets together with Donald Blake, which uh, not really that much of a disappointment. <laughs> what a tragedy Blake. there. Yeah, that relationship didn't last in the comics either. So Donald Blake gets with Sif instead, but then Jane Foster gets with Odin? Huh? Because Jane Foster goes and kicks a bunch of bad guys' asses in front of Odin, and Odin's like, yo, that's hot! <laughs> but the two cyst. <laughs> that, well, she's got Thor's hammer, but she's still Jane Foster. That's the weird thing. Because with Donald Blake, it's like, well, it's not so much that it's a human wielding Thor's hammer, it's that it's actually Thor himself. He just doesn't know he's Thor yet. Whereas Jane Foster, they it's just explicitly, oh yeah, Jane Foster's a human, but she's just so good she can get the hammer. Uh -huh. <laughs> Which would be the start of a long trend of dudes other than Thor getting the hammer, so, you know. Yeah. Like, would you say that pro that story probably did actually set the precedent for the idea that Thor can there can be non Thor people who are good enough to wield the hammer? Probably, up to that point, probably nobody else had even contemplated the idea that somebody else could lift Thor's hammer. And in the main six one six universe, who was the first person other than Thor to lift the hammer? Was it Bill Masterson? Um. I'm wondering if it was, it, it, it could have been Cap or Beta Ray Bill as well, couldn't it? I, I think 
if it wasn't Captain America, it was Beta Ray Bill. Because I think, uh, is his name Bill or is it Eric? Whoever Thunderstrike oh, right, is. Oh, you're right, Eric Masterson. Yeah, Eric. I, I mixed, okay. <laughs> Will I Foster is uh, Goliath. Yes. Or, yeah. That, that's where I got thrown for a loop. Uh, yeah, I feel like Eric Masterson came quite a bit after those two. That Yeah, that would make sense. Because uh, Eric Masterson was... Was Eric Masterson Thor a considerable amount of time before Infinity Gauntlet? E kind of, I think. Um, I think back then they they were slanting actual Thor, and they were using Eric Masterson a lot more in that role because yeah. I think the story was that normal Thor was quote unquote dying, but I I don't remember the specifics of it all. I, I do yeah. know that Eric had a pretty lengthy run as Thor himself, though. Yeah. But one thing I want to say just real quick, because it just amused me. In that What If Jane Foster, they show, what if the Avengers assembled, but, you know, Thor's a woman, and so on. And one thing that did crack me up is, you know, in the original first issue of Avengers, when Janet and Hank first see uh, Thor, Janet's all like, oh, give me a piece of that. And Hank's like, shut mm-hmm. up, woman. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and in the Jane Foster version, Hank looks at Jane Foster Thor and goes, oh, give me a piece of that. <laughs> and Janet's like, shut up, ma'am. <laughs> one, one story and suddenly everything's different. Now Janet beat up Hank and Janet invented Holtron. Weird. Yes. Jan- Jan- Janet is the freaking, is the, the, the domestic abuser now. <laughs> yeah. Thor, Thor is the reason <laughs> that Hank became a domestic abuser. You heard it here first. Uh whew. All right. Yeah, that's my week. All nice. right. Well, first things first. I saw this picture and I thought of you, W. Like you, you were the first person that came came to mind. Excuse me. Put it in the pictures. It's all of your favorite things. Hmm. Well, I'm glad they're all quarantined off together instead of bothering me in something I actually like. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Aside from that, there's also a topic that we started, but we didn't finish. What was that? A couple of weeks ago. Well, the thing with... um. The the thing with between Elden Ring and, and um fucking Horizon, which by the way, like Um how do I put I this? I thought we didn't want to talk Elden Ring. Well that's the that's the thing, that there's a difference. I'm I'm sick of Elden Ring being everywhere I go. I don't care when when we talk talk about it here because you're my friends. Like you like Elden Ring. That's fine. You can talk about Elden Ring. I will listen to you and I I will actually care. I just I, I wish there was a reprieve. Is all, <laughs> but you know, like you don't have to be it. And and, and like e- even with that, there's a difference because when Undertale was this big, the, like the parts that people praised, I was like, well, they, they're they're all good parts of this game. It's just completely negated by by the bad parts, and the pe- the parts that people praise are not even the good parts. With Elden Ring. I can at least say, hey, the things are pe- th- things people are saying jacks up with my experience of, of soul- Souls likes. So even though I don't I enjoy them, at least it doesn't seem like they're fucking lying. <laughs> <laughs> like it, it can be good, <laughs> actually. <laughs> uh, what well, I I guess, like, I, yeah. I, again, I haven't been paying a super big amount of attention. On some level, I do think that uh, Dark Souls could stand to gain some quality of life features. I mean, at the same time, I do think there are factors to the whole accessibility debate where with Dark Souls and a few other games, you do have to just say, not every game is for everyone. I mean, we have the same talk with fighting games, right? It's fine that there are some fighting games that try to be a lot more simplified, like fight, uh, like uh, Fantasy Strike. 
Yeah. At the same time, you can have the more complex fighting games that aren't that are a bit harder to get into, and that's fine. Not every game needs to be for everyone. Yeah. Like it, it, it's a sentiment that you find it hard to agree with when you're an outsider to a given uh, genre, right? Like, for instance, I'm not super great with ra- racing games. So if I heard someone say that about, I don't know, Gran Turismo or something, I'd be going like, well, no, I think that you should make it a little easier for me to get into the game. And, I mean, we all have that tendency. But at the same time, we've all got genres where we are the person who likes the relatively inaccessible game. Yeah. I'm having trouble trying to come up with an example for uh, Pink. Pink, do you have any examples you can come up with for yourself? I don't have a clue what's going on here. Okay. Pink, do you like Zelda? No. Shit, I forgot. Mm. <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember if if there's a ga- game that's like like I, I could say Civ, but I don't I don't have, have enough experience with Civ to actually t- say is if it's complicated or not to an outsider. Uh, mm, uh Civ 6 is kind of complex a little bit, yeah. Though honestly, I think a lot of the complex- complexities of Civ 6 are not to its favor. Uh hmm. Siege. What about Siege? Yeah, maybe Siege. See, because I don't know about you guys, but I found Siege kind of impenetrable. Yeah, 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 that's true. <laughs> I mean, impenet- like- I had a good time, but whenever it was like, all right, you got to make sure you have win- good window and wall placement, I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know. For for me, like, I was fine with, with, um, with, with it happening. At the same time, I was like, it's, it's the same thing that with, like, with fighting games where, like, I'm fine with other people knowing shit down to that point. I can't for- force myself to care. Like it, I don't, I don't want to lo- look up like fucking text spaces and shit like that for for where I where I should be at any, any given given point in time. I'll figure it out, and if I can't, then tough luck. <laughs> <laughs> Like it's it's the same with same with fighting games. Like yeah, I I could use like you know per, perfect um fucking like max max min max com- combos and shit, but that that's not that's not where the games are fun for me. So I I don't. Like if, if uh, that... yeah yeah El... yeah. I, I was just gonna say Elden Ring is uh, going through a fair bit of that right now, to my understanding. Like I said, I'm trying not to pay attention to it, but I'm hearing a bit of it. I think from soon. Apparently, there's a whole thing right now. There's been a long, long, long running gag in Dark Souls of saying that uh, people who use dexterity-based builds, which is to say people who play with daggers, katanas, rapiers, a couple other weapon types, saying they are gay or they aren't real Dark Souls players or whatever, and it's supposed to mostly be in jest. But apparently now it's getting real, real bad in terms of internal player base elitism in Elden Ring, where people are saying, if you use magic, uh, you didn't really beat the game. You use ranged weapons, uh, you didn't really beat the game. Dexterity weapons? Eh, you didn't really beat the game. Summons? Eh, you didn't beat the game. Ashes of War? One of the fundamental mechanics that the game was entirely advertised around? Eh, you didn't beat the game. Yeah, I, I, saw, I saw a post. Which I realize Absolutely. sounds hilarious for you guys, especially considering Ted, like, a, a week ago went on a rant about how Souls is only fun for elitist purposes or something like that. Right. Yeah, I, I, like, I, I saw a post around the release of Elden Ring where um, it, it was like, it was calling people who joined the the Souls um series through Elden Ring, uh, lesser players pretty much, and they were like they were pushing up like Bloodborne. I think I for I forget. I I didn't really pay attention because why what should I? Fuck? But th- like here's the thing, bitch. Enjoy Lords of the Fallen. Then we'll talk. <laughs> like... Elden Elden Ring is like the hardest. I I mean don't like. It's free roam, world, open world, so if you bounce off a boss real hard, you can just go off and fight another boss, don't get me wrong, but, like, if they're trying to say, like, well, you're a baby player because you haven't played Dark Souls, whatever, then... You haven't like, gone through the entire franchise, so obviously, you shouldn't be here at all. Yeah, it's like, I'm, I'm sorry, but the very first boss, the very first story boss you fight, Morgit the Fell Omen, is harder than any boss in Dark Souls 1. Easily. Like, if you, if someone wants to take up the stance of like, 
well, you're not a real Souls player if uh, you start with Elden Ring because it's for babies. And it's like, have you played the fucking game, jackass? Uh, I don't know. But still, like, this, 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 is, this is... This is, what I've, this yeah. is what I've said before. Souls has the worst community. I love the Souls games, but they do have a terrible community. Yeah. But if I had to hate every game that had a bad community, I wouldn't be able to like any games. Very true. But like, you don't I, like I, anything, because anytime you have a group of more than fifty people, you're gonna get a load of douchebags. Yeah, you know, like that—that's that, the thing. Like that, like I feel like that—that that is the ultimate source challenge. Now, don't just beat it. Enjoy Lords of the Fallen. That is the real source. Yeah. Like that—that that yeah, is the real—that is the real right. source. It hollows <laughs> you in real life. The challenge here is to find the fun. Yes. And then I say this as someone who actually beat that game. I, I put myself through that, through that pain. And so can you. It's on sale every, th- oh. every two weeks. I can, but I won't. <laughs> I already put like 20 minutes into that game and was like, oh, fuck this. See, you're, you're not a real source player because you didn't cut, cut off your dick with a rusty spoon. No! <laughs> All this time invested and wasted. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> I, the, the, the thing, like, the thing, um, my thing is that, like, I find, um, the, this, no, the notion of you're not really, like, you're, 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 you haven't actually experienced Souls because, because you joined with, with so game and such game. So stupid that it becomes humorous. That's why I'm putting forward this Lords of the Fallen thing because genuinely, like, I would, I would honestly watch like a- actual Souls players try to find the fun in that game. Yeah, and watch them hollow in real life. I remember, I once read a tweet. This is probably four or five years ago now. I once read a tweet that said, "You aren't a real gamer until you've eaten an entire Nintendo 64 cartridge." <laughs> <laughs> No, you're not a real gamer until until you re eat and um you you eat an entire Naomi board. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, like you know, some sometimes I do the the, the elitist shit as well, but it's it's it depends on on the opinion on on uh, on the context as well, because like. I, I will think less of someone's opinion opinion if they're like, hey, Assassin's Creed Odyssey is the best Assassin's Creed game. It's also the only one I've played. Like you, you have you have you have nothing to compare it to. You can't really. That's say- not a lazy, That's not elitism. That's a person judging an entire series off of a very small reference pool. I guess <laughs> I don't know, but like yeah, like that, that. That's my thing. Like you know, whatever the people who like the new Assassin's Creed games, whatever they they they're getting shit made for them. So like they're not any less um less fan, fans, but like hey, get reference. <laughs> it's like. I mean, like, if if it doesn't appeal to them, then it doesn't appeal to them. But if they're trying to talk objective quality, that's another matter in, altogether. Yeah. Right? Did, yeah. Because, I mean, if someone can just, like, be really super into what the newest Assassin's Creed to offer, which is, I, I, I guess, grinding and uh, random yeah. sex quests. Grinding and uh, the, grinding, grinding and um and uh like AI AI made cutscenes because we don't really we don't actually want to have cutscenes, but people will freak out if you remove them all together. <laughs> and yeah. to them, a more like single player focused, narrative focused, kind of almost like I don't want to say like GTA, but like a thing of like you progress by collecting new weapons and new outfits, but you don't really get stronger. Might not appeal to some people, I guess. And if it doesn't, then it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah. to, to me, to me, it always just com- comes down to the thing of, like, if you enjoy Assassin's Creed Odyssey, why not just play The Witcher? It's it's better. It's literally the thing that it, it's, com- it's fucking copying, but, you know. <laughs> I'm sure they already have. Maybe. Now I don't know. P- Pink, have, Pink, have you? No. I, I can't play as Cassandra in The Witcher. But yes, but you can, you can have awkward sex on the docks with Redhead. But it I, wouldn't be awkward sex with Cassandra, though. No. But yeah, but she's badly written anyway. It doesn't matter. But but she's so much prettier than Henry Cavill. But it's not even Henry Cavill in the games. 
Oh no wonder I haven't played them. But you can go to France. But no, you can you can go to not France. Ew! Who wants to go to France? <laughs> uh, the, the, what kind of a selling point is that? Honestly, the the Blood and Wine DLC is my favorite part of The Witcher Three because you go to not France and it's just a whole big fucking parody and, and of, of of like medieval France, and the story is just hunting vampires. That's the that's the only good part of The Witcher Three, and it's a DLC. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but like, like yeah. That like if you if you enjoyed the overall gameplay design of Assassin's Creed Odyssey, to me it's just like well I could play The Witcher Three and that's the thing it's copying. Or if I like the if I like the combat, I can go play Dark Souls and that that has it like infinitely better designed. <laughs> well, yes, yeah, there's more than one weapon, so. I mean, it's, it's, there there's also more than one weapon in Assassin's Creed Odyssey even, but still, like, it, yeah, it, I don't I don't get it. Like why why. How how is Dark Souls Dark Souls combat combined with Diablo numbers good? <laughs> oh. Well, the, Diablo's the... number game is fun because you aren't like worrying about all the shit you worry about in Dark Souls. It's like, it, let's just see how many spells I can stack on this fucker. <laughs> but yeah, but imagine if the Diablo number game applied to Dark Souls combat, and that's a, that's kind of Assassin's Creed now. Yeah. At least Odyssey. I don't remember how. All, I don't have enough experience with Valhalla to properly, uh, like tell you what it felt like. But the Odyssey definitely felt like that, and I played through all of the game twice. So maybe I know. Maybe I don't know. Uh, it it is always amusing, like going over from other RPGs where there is so much of that number crunching, and a lot of times it can be fun. You go to Dark Souls, and it's like, I have a sword, and I got a necklace that makes me hit harder. <laughs> Bring it on. Yeah, I, I don't ha I don't have that experience, because my primary experience with Souls-like is fucking Neo. Where it's like, hey, yeah. have, you, have you heard of Diablo? Do you like yeah, Diablo? <laughs> yeah, I fucking bounced off Neo because of that. Uh, I, I think I've also said this before, but I'm just not a big fan of Neo doing things like where it's the, the randomly generated loot and so on. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like Neo seemed like seemed like a Souls game I would like because it actually has like a more traditional that plot and shit. But I, I nobody told me about the numbers game. <laughs> yeah, like if if I knew about the numbers game, I wouldn't have bought Neo. <laughs> yeah, because uh, it it makes it makes progress feel worthless. So like. Yeah, th th there's just so many things to to discuss with shit like this. Cause like I rem I remember how I like I still have I still have a rooted hatred for Nue just because of Neo. Like I didn't feel triumphant when I beat Nue. I was just like fucking hell. I can actually finish the game now, and then I was yeah. bitter for the rest of the game. I quit the game twice of Nue. He's the third level boss, but you know he's not even the boss. He's the mini boss of the third level. And then you have to you have to fight fight him again in the boss rush, and I beat him first right there. <laughs> that was great. That that was vindication. <laughs> I always like when they bring back a boss from earlier in the game, and they don't change their stats at all. So I don't you know just, if, like game yeah. with one punch. Oh, it wasn't one punch. I I I don't I don't know if they they messed around with the the numbers or not. But either way, I still got it first try instead of having to quit the game twice. So hey. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, like honestly, my favorite part, my favorite uh, moment in, in Neo was um, there's a there's an Ui boss called Ui Bozu, and it's this dock that you go to, and it's this big slime. It's this slime the sli size of a building that you have to fight. Uh, yeah. Oh no, go ahead. So my favorite moment in Neo is when um I went in, it killed me. I go back in, get my soul. It has a one-hit kill move where it shoots a laser. So what? I go, yeah, I go in, I get my soul immediately from off screen, instant that laser. <laughs> <sighs> like that, that was so comical. Is it legit? Is it legit instant kill? I think so. Jesus. And like it's it's not it's not supposed to be like it's it's not a, a sure thing that it, it it will be its first attack. It just happened to be the first attack that time. 
I, I hate that shit in video games when uh, an AI has one attack that is clearly better than all the others. And the AI would win the match easy if it just spammed that move over and over again. So whenever it doesn't do that move, it feels like the AI is just fighting inefficiently for your sake. I hate that shit. Yeah. And so... Like I was like I I I have been pretty bitter going going into that that level. I think that's the fourth level, by the way. I forget. <laughs> Things kind of just blend together nah. in that game. But like it, th that moment made me so angry that I started laughing, because like I I wasn't really, I wasn't really angry. It was just so fucking comical that I spent the last twenty minutes getting to it, and then it killed me. And then I spent another ten minutes getting to it. Immediately dead. Immediately. Something I observed about Neo in my time, and something that sounds uh, cogent with what you're saying, is that Neo has a difficulty scaling problem. Yes, definitely. <laughs> like Neo's Neo's yeah, that, Neo's first difficulty check is this, is the second level. That's that's a lot of why I did not like. I was not so big on Dark Souls Three. It's I. I I know that so often it can be this mentality of, well, the difficulty is part of the fun, which is partly true. But I still think that you need to have some degree of actual, like, difficulty scaling and easing the player into mechanics and so on. Which I think, for the most part, FromSoft has done fine, though I just did say Dark Souls 3 for a reason. And yeah, that was definitely one of my problems with Neo, or it's like, entirely new systems you've never been had, like, really messed around with in any other game before. Also, fuck you, here's, like, super hard boss. Eat shit. Yeah. <laughs> and then when we played together, you, you were still trying to figure out the controls while I was while I was at the boss, currently killing it. Yeah, I, I definitely remember that, yes. Because we, we shot... I think we by the time yeah. we got that boss, I was still mystified by the fact that the illusory walls fight back. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, we, we got past the second boss? Because that's... Oh no, I that, that so. I don't remember if there's an illusionary, illusionary wall or not in in the the freaking the, the first level, but yeah, the like it, it was, yeah. <laughs> like that, that's that, that was that, that was by the point that my hatred hardened me. <laughs> <laughs> and I still haven't done the DLC. I own the DLC, but I refuse to play it. It, it, <laughs> if I play through the DLC, I could play as Zatama Samune, but fuck it. it. It's not worth it. Oh, I just remembered something I want to mention real quick. Yeah? Uh, so, Souls, we just mentioned illusory walls, right? And, oh, yeah, there's multiple. You know what illusory walls are? They're walls that are actually walls? Yes. It's they're, they're real fake doors. They're, they're real fake doors. <laughs> <laughs> They are walls that if you smack them, they disappear. They're kind of a Dark Souls tradition, but part of the trick is, in the well-designed instances of Dark Souls games, is that there's clues around them to give you a hint. Like, oh, it's a long hallway ending in a dead end. Huh. Well, and if, I wonder. If, and if you, walk, walk in, if you walk into the dead end, there, there's a pop-up that says, try finger butthole. Yes. That's the other classic, right? The messaging system is in place, so other players can leave a bunch of, like, You'll know there's probably an illusory wall, and you'll see like 30 messages sitting near it saying illusion, question mark, or liar, question mark. So Elden Ring has illusory walls. Elden Ring is an open world game. A very, very big one. And Elden Ring has layered illusionary walls. It does. It does. Well, I think it only has that one, because that one is a send-up to one back in Dark Souls 1. And Dark Souls 1 had a secret uh, area locked, uh, hidden behind two illusory walls. Uh. And I, I want to say Elden Ring is doing, it did that. I hope it did, and I didn't miss out on any. No, from, from, what, I hear, from what I hear, there's multiple. Oh, uh, that, uh, okay. Well, at least I have some warning, I suppose. So yeah, people are having, like, freakouts about, like, holy shit, where, how, many Elden, how many illusory walls are there? I have to hit every wall! <laughs> All these walls gotta come down now. <laughs> but I will say, nice little convenience of life feature. The past Souls games featured weapon durability, which never made sense to me as a mechanic, especially in Dark Souls 3. 
Elden Ring just finally got rid of it. So now you can smack all the walls with abandon. You don't even have to care. Nice. <laughs> I mean, not, not like the not like the um the dur durability actually mattered at all. No. Well, no, no. In Dark Souls One and Bloodborne is just an annoyance mechanic that you every now and then you got to remember. Ah, oh, shit, got to go to a blacksmith and get a repair. Dark Souls 2, it is there as a mechanic to prevent you from making too much progress without a bonfire, which I don't think was particularly a problem to begin with, so not sure what's up with that. Dark Souls 3, it was entirely irrelevant, because they kept the Dark Souls 2 thing of your weapons getting repaired every time you touch a bonfire, but they could, kept the Dark Souls 1 and Bloodborne levels of durability. So it would take several levels of, of killing enemies to make your weapon break, but there are several bonfires per level, so you're never going to get even like a, qu a, a quarter of the way through the weapon of dur yeah, durability. Nice. Yeah. So they fought with Elden Ring, they were finally like, ah, fuck, it is a pointless mechanic, so they trashed it. Uh, I do want to mention this, uh, two other convenient things I do hope other open world games learn from. If they learn nothing else from Elden Ring, which I wouldn't entirely blame them for, because it's kind of its own thing, and they can just let it do its own thing. But for one thing, Elden Ring has where the stamina mechanic only works in combat. If you're outside of combat, your character just has infinite stamina. You can roll for days. Yes. At least until you get aggroed on. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> but you are invincible while dodge rolling. You can also crouch sprint for what it's worth. Ah, uh, you can do the duck walk. Yeah, yeah, pretty well. Which looks absolutely goofy on some of the heavier armor sets, because it's like... Dark Souls loves the classic obese man ar armor set. I don't know why. And you can still crouch walk wearing that. So... And the other thing is... This is a Dark Souls classic, going back to Dark Souls 1. But Elden Ring is the first free open world RPG in forever to have no carry weight. Ah, nice. And yeah, the more time you spend with games that don't have carry weight, the more you realize what a pointless mechanic carry weight is. <laughs> no, but it's not, real, it's, not real, it's not realistic that, that people can carry, carry shit around on their backs. Also, eat all 50 of your, your, your cheese wheels that you have on you. I was about to, yeah, like, how does your... Even, like, in, like, let's say Skyrim or Fallout, you can fit 50 shotguns in your back pocket, and as long as it's under the carry weight, oh, you're, you're fine. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's realistic, you see. And have any of you guys ever carried a shotgun? They're pretty fucking heavy. That's the I joke, yes. <laughs> I'd have a seriously hard time carrying three or four of them across the Mojave Desert while it's burning hot. <laughs> but if but if you have We're four on you but but if you have six on you you can sex up wield them. Yeah. It looks cool. Well, I mean, in Fallout, you would have the radiation to grow four more arms. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there you go. There's your crossover between Man Spider and Spider Punisher. There you go. <laughs> uh, Pink, you missed, missed that one, but Davia told me about Spider Punisher being a thing right now. And I am, I am really disappointed that his his um his outfit isn't just a normal uh black and blue, but but with the with the hand parts blackened from the from the gunpowder. That'd be funny. Yeah. And did you hear how he fires his guns, Pink? No. He had the web shooters replaced with guns, so that whenever he does the classic Spider-Man thing, it just shoots. <laughs> Ah, oh boy. Uh, but yeah. yeah. So, going back to the topic, I guess. Um, like my my thing is that, like, on one hand, I can understand um the complaints of the developers who complain about Elden Ring. On the other hand, I I would infinitely easier on um like believe people when they say that Elden Ring is good than when they say that Horizon is good. <laughs> Just from my own experience, because <laughs> like, oh, right. 
Yeah. I, I Horizon does its own thing. I, I wasn't super into it, but it seemed fun for people who are looking for that experience. I don't know. It's like Horizon does do some of its own thing, but like the things that I remember are not 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 its own thing. Like the things I remember from playing Zero Dawn. Is that the one I own? It is. Yeah. <laughs> My experience from uh, playing Zero Dawn was that were part of the experience that I remember are Ubisoft towers and shitty like take on Dark Souls combat. So, like, you know, there are there are um original things in it because of the whole taming mechanic that they have if i remember correctly but like it's yeah. it wasn't enough for me to really like set it apart where i guess i guess in a, in a way like I, i'm not the biggest fan of dinosaurs so i just didn't really care about taming dinosaurs as much unless they were for used for distraction <laughs> so i was le uh, left to, yeah yeah wasn't horizon mostly a third person shooter and the dark souls combat was just there as a last resort I don't remember. It may have been. I, I believe it was, because I don't think you can get any melee weapons other than that default spear you start with. Yes. sucked. <laughs> but, I mean, is it really a third-person shooter? Because I remember there being a... I, I don't even remember there being a bow. Was there more? No! No, you can get a bunch more weapons. Okay, I and I, I just don't remember the gunfights, I guess. I didn't get out of the tutorial area, but I definitely know I picked up another gun that was like a little uh, spike rope. Like it, it, You shot out a little rope, and it stuck onto the dinosaur, and then Aloy would then turn the gun down and shoot the other end into the ground. And it was basically a gun that let you tie dinosaurs in place, and if you set up multiple, it would even force the dinosaur to just sit, sit there. Which I believe the primary value of it, of course, was that you could use it to tame dinosaurs easier. I completely forgot that they, that, that, that game had guns. <laughs> it's more eight percent. Yeah, there was also a sling. You could uh, and that sling you could craft special ammos for, like grenades and stuff, to sling at people. I probably skipped on the sling just because it, it had a crafting mechanic. I am fucking sick. <laughs> or I was. Like I, I yeah, played, yeah. I played through Horizon like when I got my PS4 because it came with it, and that's that's it. I haven't played through it again since then. Like I think I'll, I think Horizon is pro I think Horizon seemed good so far. I just think it's very much not your game at all in any way. Yeah. And then uh freaking like you know there was a discussion of um of like the of the accessibility stuff and when it comes to that like I feel like um a good way to go about it to to like because most of the developers who complained about the other ring were people who are who are trying to you know um make the games as, um, or make the game, games, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Audience, I guess. To make, make it as big as possible. Now, a way to accommodate that shit is to copy, um, like, I guess, in a way, copy early Assassin's Creed or, um, Ghost of Tsushima, like, level design, where you don't need the minimap. It's there if you want, if you want to use it. It's there by default. You can turn the minimap off and you can still find where things are because there's landmarks though and that's that, that's a thing that i i like that's the the big thing against um the way game um open world games are designed now right now is that like aside from elder Elden ring most of them are like well people will uh, will use the the minimap or whatever the the fucking the the shitty ass map marker that that is pretty nice, is nigh unusable, and we only use because people complain about the minimap. People use that that to find whatever we're trying to point at anyway, so we don't need to give a shit about actually making landmarks and stuff for people to navigate without them. Or at that, least there is yeah. def there is definitely a degree of that going on where open world game design does have a tendency to copy and paste a lot of it and make it where there's not really easy to understand landmarks like that i mean i i know this is always a thing with the forum but like skyrim is a good example of that a game where you can plop the character down anywhere like south of the really snowy reaches up near dawnstar and you the player probably will not know where they are yeah <laughs> you know yeah and like i brought up assassin's creed as, a, as, a, as an example but I, and i kind of use it as a, use, use it as an example for both because back in like assassin's creed through brotherhood to assassin's creed 2 brotherhood days the game was designed so you you could use the game without a minimap, and you can more or less 
navigate without a minimap. I don't know because I have Oh, shit. easily. Okay, I, I wouldn't There's... know because I have shit navig navigation to begin with, so... <laughs> Brotherhood, like, maybe if you're stuck in a back alley of some one of the neighborhoods of Rome, maybe, but for the most part, yes, Brotherhood, you can navigate without a uh, landmark. I mean, navigate without the, ma the map, yes. Yeah. And then compare that to Unity, or any of the games that came after it, or maybe even some of the ones that came before it, I'm not sure exactly. But compared to Unity, where there's a, there are a couple of landmarks, but the, the, the um like everything did start to blend together. Even though like you you had the Notre Dame, and you had like a couple of well known buildings, and it was otherwise it was just the same house. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, the limited time I spent with Unity, it did not seem like Paris was super remarkable, which is weird because Paris is like one of the most iconic cities in the world. But you know, yeah. And so, though it would yeah. be, it would be pre World War Two Paris, so I imagine that a fair bit of the Paris we see in Unity does not exist anymore. Yeah, yeah, more or less. <laughs> like the, it's not only that, but also a lot of the things that um that are associated with Paris just didn't get made yet, like the like the Eif Eiffel Tower. Of course, yeah. Although I did I did like how one of the one of the rifts in Unity um you have to you have to do parkour on the Statue of Liberty. Because <laughs> they because they're building it. <laughs> That's actually great. Uh but yeah. So you know that that's that's basically my point is that like you know, um, I, I don't like how Elden Ring is designed, personally, in, in many ways, but a way to, um, a way to have, have, have your cake and eat it, too, for, for the developers, co developers complaining about the, the, the success of Elden Ring, would just be to make it so people who want to play with, with HUD, with a, with a lot of HUD, can, and then you can give them the, those information. Alternatively, people who don't, who don't who want more exploration-based gameplay and stuff like that can turn the fucking HUD off, and then they can play the game without any setbacks, with like that too. Like just make it, yeah. make it, make it so that the people talking aren't just like, "Hey, go over there." They they say, "Hey, go south," like two blocks. Make it yeah. so, make it so there are actual landmarks that people can point to for for freaking uh, navigation, and then people will stop complaining <laughs> because that's what people are missing. Yeah, and like, I always remember yeah. how with Skyrim people will mod out, uh, like will mod the game to tell them less. Like they try, they try to. I've seen people try to mod Skyrim to resemble the Morrowind Journal, right? Oh no, the Morrowind Journal. Yeah, the, which I th I think is insane because the Morrowind Journal I think is actually one of the worst examples of that. Morrowind is an odd example though because it's a little bit held back by the tech of the time. Because, I mean, the draw distance is so short, you can't see the landmarks that you're usually supposed to reckon by. A lot of the times the game tells you to reckon by certain landmarks or road signs that you don't know about yet. So you'll frequently get lost trying to find them. And the worst thing of all, travel in Morrowind is fucking slow! Yeah, I, I, I know. I, I remember. I started playing Morrowind. I got to the first city. They told me to go to a bar. I never found it. <laughs> oh, here's another, like... Like, uh, with Elden Ring, generally speaking, if you veer off the path accidentally and find an entirely different dungeon, that's fun and cool, and hey, it's some new enemies and a new boss, all this is cool, because Elden Ring still builds things in a difficulty-scaling manner. Morrowind, if you veer off the trail and go into the wrong dungeon, you get face-fucked by the first enemy. Because it's like, oh, wait, I apparently wasn't high enough level for this dungeon, I was, this is a level 50 dungeon full of ash vampires. I was apparently supposed to go into the next dungeon, which is full of the level one rats I was supposed to be fighting. Okay. Yeah. Pink. Elden Ring is pretty yeah. well just a difference between do you want to fight level 10 skeletons or do you want to fight level 10 uh, uh, rats or level 10 bandits? You know, go ahead. Doesn't make yeah. a difference. Pink, any, any th thoughts on the, all, all we've said, I guess? Because you haven't spoken in a while. Ah, Really? You ever had a bad experience with a game, uh, with an open world game, not telling you where to go? Uh, I, plenty of times, probably. I know I, for certain, got lost in Uncharted a few times, and uh, em, plenty of times in Fallout New Vegas, there were missions where I 
didn't quite know the way or would get lost going what I thought was the way, but it turned out I was going the wrong way. Because oh God, New there Vegas so definitely times. does not have a good navigation system. Yes, there are so many times in New Vegas where you have to go somewhere else in the desert, and you try to like go up a rock wall, you can't go up it. Okay, let's go around it. What mm-hmm. the fuck? Why am I in Red Rock Canyon? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah, did, I, I, I cast yeah. Or, Oh God! <laughs> and time to die. Yeah, if if you want to know why I have such a such a ra- large head boner for for the the like compass style navigational system that every everything you seems to use nowadays, that's why. <laughs> there's a ton of in- there's a ton of information to be useful, but there's too much information for for people to to design without it. It's the worst of both worlds. One of the complaints. <laughs> complaints I have about New Vegas is the fact that they put in so many invisible walls to prevent you from skyrimming up the side of mountains. Yeah. It's kind of like, honestly, I found Skyrim a lot easier to navigate because I could just walk over the mountains. Uh, freaking, but being t- saying Uncharted also reminded me of the time I got lost in that, in, in the fourth one. Uh, there's a, there's an open world-ish part where you have to drive a car in Africa, if I remember correctly. And I wasn't paying complete, at- paying com- complete attention to to the dialogue, so they just, they, they said where to go, but I didn't hear it. And then they never repeated the line or anything similar. It was just, when are we getting there, Drake? When I, <laughs> as I spent, as I spent the next an hour and a half looking for looking for the place that I was supposed to be at. <laughs> it was great. Sounds like it. Yeah. Just yesterday, and while playing Elden Ring, I I stopped paying attention during a very apparently a quite important lore dialogue and missed out on most of it. Then later on, uh, uh, you get a twist related to that uh, dialogue. And it's like, surprise, this was actually that! And because I had not been paying attention during that dialogue, I just stared at it and went, okay? Nice. Surprise. This feels important, (laughs) but I don't know why. Surprise, Nilo Angelo was Virgil all along. What's a Nilo Angelo? <laughs> what if what if what if what if the Elden Ring lore was just spoiling other games? Yeah. <laughs> Your reward for completing the first dungeon. Uh Snape kills Dumbledore. <laughs> it's just a message you find on the floor. <laughs> Oh, hey, I finally got to the Erd Tree. What's it say on the side of the Erd Tree? Oh, would you kindly is a brainwashing message. Huh. What the hell's that mean? Oh, uh, freaking uh. hell. You, you beat the final boss. Uh, it, 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 like, bursts into fl- into flames. You walk over over to the flames. The, the, ash, the ash says, Hayden Canvey is a temp- Templar. <laughs> Uh, There's buddy. a boss that yeah. when you fight him, when you get to the mid stage, the way that his boss fight changes at the mid stage is a big neon sign starts floating over him that simply says, "It was Sid- it was Kane's sled." <laughs> <laughs> uh, if if you kill enough skeletons, then their bone- bones just form. Kara is you. <laughs> I'm trying to remember remember other like shitty spoilers that that, that it could say, but I I don't remember because it's like like how do I spoil the the plot to Mirror's Edge when there's no plot? I don't remember any story. Like I I remember what the story no. was supposed to be in the in the second game, but there was no story. It got cutscenes happened. There was just no lore. Well, you're reminding me of Super Hot now. Oh, did you hear about that one? Mm-hmm. That that's a that's a great way to ruin your game to the people who liked it. I never even liked uh-huh. Super Hot, but still. Yeah, uh, it, it's one of those. It's absolutely just one of those, you know, too deep for me. You know, yeah, fourteen year old kid kind of vibes there. I'm super. Like, this th- is hot. That narrative has been done far better by games that actually gave more of a shit about their narrative. You probably shouldn't have tried. Yeah. 
I don't even remember what was the was the big twist that video games are bad for you. Go outside and try to touch grass. The big twist is that you shouldn't have fun killing NPCs in a video game because it'll make you ah ah Undertale again. The Undertale, yeah, the Undertale <laughs> twist. <laughs> Undertale failed in, in in doing that twist because all of its characters are very annoying and shitty. <laughs> nah. Like Undertale could have, could have pulled that off if the if the writing was better, I guess. Or I, I guess no, that, that's not 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 the best way to put it because the writing may be good. I don't remember, but the characters themselves were too annoying. <laughs> like you can tell that Toby Fox worked on Homestuck. <laughs> I never like I've only I've only read part of Homestuck, but I don't need to read more. I I I have had enough. Thank you. <laughs> Just boy. <laughs> That's a blast from the past. Okay, I got a question for you guys. Yeah? What's your favorite example of fans misinterpreting the point of a, the theme of a story? Hmm. I mean, I can go with an easy answer. Which is one that we, we even we misunderstood, but that's not, that's not my favorite one. I, I guess I can fill with time with it if, if y'all want. Well, if, well, we figure yeah. out. Okay. okay, Naruto. People think that that the team team is that it, that it, that hard work uh, wins in the end, but no. Naruto follows every other shonen in in its theme being that destiny. You cannot change destiny. Just fucking kill yourself. <laughs> it's yeah. better. Fate you, you... dictates everything. Friendship is power. Yeah, fate dictates everything around me. Cream get the money. <laughs> and if you aren't the protagonist, just fuck off. Yeah. You don't matter. You will never matter. No matter how hard you try. You... Yeah. Pink, is there an example you can think of from a comic book, from Marvel or DC or what have you, of a, a, a fan just entirely misinterpreting a theme of a story and it becoming a popular interpretation? Um, it's a good question there. I guess the classic one is Rorschach is good. Yeah. I, but see, that's the stance I took on that. To me, at the end, Rorschach was the only one who really, from, from the very beginning of the book, Rorschach is the only one who really sets anything in motion in order to be perceived as good. Yeah, I mean, Ozzy, Ozzy does his thing, but Ozzy is... You know, Ozzy is Ozzy. Uh, Ozzy does his thing, and his thing is kind of murderous. Just a tad. I mean, I, I know you're talking about Ozzy Mendez, but, uh, but, but I, I'm imagining you're talking about Ozzy Osbourne. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, now that you're pointing out, like, the other four out of the main six Watchmen characters are more passive participants, while those two are more active, I guess. Yeah. Like, even Dr. Manhattan, the most powerful thing ever, very passive participant. <laughs> he nopes off planet. Yeah. Twice! <laughs> Watchmen, yeah, I guess Watchmen is also just one of those cases where, it's, where Alan Moore did leave a lot of it to interpretation. And, like, when HBO did their show, HBO just explicitly said, no, fuck you, Rorschach is right. <laughs> Which was such a surprise, because kind of what they did when they introduced... Like, the main villain for most of the HBO's Watchmen show is a bunch of white supremacists inspired by Rorschach. Then the ending twist of the show is, no, Rorschach was right. Fuck Ozzy. <laughs> I just find that deeply amusing. Mm. I'm still trying to, trying to think of what my favorite is, but, it, but like... It's not really the show's themes as, as much as the character specifically, because like we can always point point to characters be, being misunderstood, mainly the villains like Dio. Like Dio, Dio has a reason for being evil, just not to the not 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 to the degree that he is evil. <laughs> Dio like Griffith, where people are like, oh, actually, he's pretty great when you think about his motives. No, he isn't. Did you pay attention <laughs> to what he actually did? Oh my god, that that may be. Griffith, I know neither of you guys have read Berserk. Neither of you guys I know, have read Berserk, right? I, I, know, I know what happens with Griffith. What, what happens with Griffith is part, a part of why I, why I haven't read Berserk, yes. 
Uh, Berserk is fantastic, but it's very, very dark, very, very grim. Yeah. I would say that I only read up until the uh, thing happens, which is, surprisingly enough, 100 issues in, which I did not expect. But nonetheless, I had a great time reading Berserk. And maybe now that uh, Myra's dead and now we know the series won't be finished, maybe I should go back and read the other stories. But either which way, yeah. Griffith has got to be the most mystifying example ever of people romanticizing a villain. Like, seriously. Pink, do you know what happens uh, with Griffith? I don't even know what Berserk is. Oh, okay, so Griffith is, is one of the main let's, antagonists from what I understand. Let's not go off on that tangent. Let's not no, go off on that tangent. That could take a while. I'll... I'll summarize. Griffith is the main main antagonist of a fan fantasy series called Berserk. Griffith is a a video game de developer in 2021. <laughs> oh. oh, that was last year. Yes, <laughs> and that's all. That's all you need to know. That that's what he does. He he does the video game developer th things in a in a large company. <laughs> or not? No, no. That's putting game devs. No, he he is he is like a uh, freaking like a big a big big a game a video game company in, in the past like couple of years. Mainly, mainly probably Activision Blizzard. Yeah. <laughs> to be I, entirely fair. Yeah. He's still better than Eves or Bobby Cockdick because at the end of the day, I guess he did it for the powers of the devil because he thought he could make the world better if he did it for the powers of the devil. Whereas, you know, those guys just did it because it got him hard. I mean, I don't know if I don't know if Eve Eve was a part part, a part of the part of it. Like Eve either way, he um he like didn't care about it happening, so it's so he's bad anyway. But I don't know if he if he if he partake partook. I don't know. Yeah. So yeah, Bobby. I I don't know. I don't I don't remember what, what happened with Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Uh, and anyway. But yeah, like like I don't I don't know if I'd say say Dio for for that reason because because um like. That's the 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 old themes of the character. The, the the themes of JoJo as a series is once again, destiny cannot be broken. Fuck you. <laughs> uh, aside, aside from that one time, destiny got broken twice. <laughs> Ignore those times. Yeah. It was back to back too. <laughs> like we part. part uh, part five and part six both end with with destiny changing for for the main character in a way. But yeah. Um, what other things are there where the themes are misunderstood? Hmm. A lot of people think Spec Ops: The Line is an anti-military game, and the developers have repeatedly said, "No, it is not." That is a game about the hero complex and how it can cause people to do stupid things. Yeah. On several sides. I, I, just, I was nearly an asshole and just said, like, they like speck on the line. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Like, I, I don't actually know if the game's bad. I would probably not enjoy it because I don't like cover shooters. And like, yeah, <laughs> that, that's about it. Oh, as cover shooters go, it's not a... It's a pretty mediocre cover shooter. It's the story and the uh, aesthetic and everything else that's good. But, like, I think even the developers will tell you, yeah, the gameplay is not anything special. Yeah. I mean, for for my part, like, I, I, I dislike cover shooters to... Like, okay, no, dislike is a strong word. I don't care about cover shooters so much that I can't enjoy Vanquish. And Vanquish is like the best cover yeah. shooter, so... It and Gears, yeah. I was never able to get good at Vanquish, though. Me neither. I, I definitely never enjoyed Gears, even though I played through most of the games. But, you know... <laughs> the only ones I haven't played were like the ones above like 4, I think? I forget, but I, I, played, I played even the spin-off one. Like something, something judgment, or was it just judgment? Judgment? I I don't remember. 
I remember uh, Matt, the super best friends, at one point told a story that there was a party that him and Wooly were at. I think it was actually being held at Wooly's house or apartment. And Wooly, at one point, starts telling everybody about Vanquish. And he brings over everyone in the party over in the living room. He pops Vanquish into the Xbox. He's like, look how cool this game is. Watch, watch, watch. He starts playing the game. He gets killed by the first boss. Nice. Uh, okay. He gets killed by the first boss again. And he keeps just completely fucking up in front of everyone. And Matt says, the crowd then just slowly dispersed until eventually it was no, one, it was just him and Wooly, at which point Wooly turned off the game. Boy. Or, why is it? It seems like a lot of the stories with Wooly just revolve around Wooly trying to do something cool and it just disappoints everyone. Yeah. I, like that one one time with the with the the freaking the launch of Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'll and, tell you what, Matt wasn't disappointed with that one. I guess he wasn't. I forget Pink. Did did, did Mike force you to watch Two Best Friends yet? No. All right. I mean, I'm certain he tried. <laughs> <laughs> He's he's definitely recommended it and spoke highly of them. I I told him I wasn't all that interested though because I had seen one of their videos and didn't really grab me in any way. I'm not very big on their machinima videos myself, honestly. That, like that kind of highly edited style where they cut it down just to either Pat suit saying something stupid or Matt saying something amusing. Yeah, I always like Super Best Friends better for the style of like. It being a relaxed situation, but they also, in, in addition to joking, could talk about serious things, right? Yeah. Like, I, I think I've mentioned this before, but the uh, playthrough I watched of theirs that made me really fall in love with them was Pat and Wooly playing through I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream, which is a very, 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 very serious game. And they do not make very many jokes at all about it. They, they make a couple jokes, but for the most part, it's just serious discussion about it which I found very, very refreshing because you very rarely get, like, serious discussions on LPs, you know? Yeah, because it's not what yeah. people are there for. Yeah. I, I say that as us being an LP group that almost never has serious discussions. <laughs> I mean, that's... <laughs> That, that that's that, that's usually though though because like when when uh whenever we have like we have had serious discussions on LPs, I had to cut them out <laughs> because yeah. they were they were too serious for for what we usually do. Like we, we it's it's either it it's either it's either none at all or way too serious for it for for it to be left in. We there is no like you know there, there's no easing into it, which is the issue, which is the issue. Like I I remember, uh there's a. There's an episode. Well, for one, there's an episode of Sengoku Basara. It happened. Both of them happened during Sengoku Basara. There's an episode of Sengoku yeah. Basara just titled Naruto and Politics because I hope that nobody would would actually watch it with that title. Huh. And, and it's also what we talk about. But like with the, for the politics discussion, I left it like one third of the actual discussion because that's what what, what was what was usable. <laughs> And then another one is there's a there's an episode I don't remember what it's called but there's an episode where we start playing a level the level took us two hours to finish we we start playing a level and then we cut to nearly the end of the level where um we I think I think you say you say some something like you're not gonna know know what we we talked we talked about talked about unless one of us gets real drunk which is true. <clears throat> Hey, you want to guess who I stole that line from? Matt or Pat, I forget. Super Best Friends? Yeah. They say that after a uh, jump cut in their playthrough of Bully, I believe. Funny they did that, though, because they were never assembled at a convention ever again after that. Hmm. <laughs> uh, but yeah. <laughs> I'm still trying to think think of games where games where the teams like the entire games teams are misunderstood, but it's usually just like the teams. You no, know actually, yeah. actually, I re I should be really happy that Pink doesn't watch Super Best Friends, 
Because if he did, he'd realize just how much of my material is stolen from them. <laughs> <laughs> so he, then he then he realized how ha half of these channels in jokes are just best friends jokes. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Come to think of it, like, does, yeah. has Goku ever said anything about like watching Super Best Friends? Because he, if Goku has watched Super Best Friends, then that means Pink's the only one out of the six of us that's never watched Super Best Friends. I don't remember. I could ask him if you want. He <laughs> just sent him a private message today. Hey, you want to watch this channel? He's like, what? Why are you asking me? <laughs> important. <laughs> Super if important. You, if you Please say no, ACP. if you say no, they'll take Wooly. <laughs> If you do not forward this message, and you will have bad luck for seven years. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, if, if you, uh, fuck it, whatever. I, I need to just read it, read it the same joke, but uh, but, but like verse kind of. <laughs> so whatever. Yeah. Uh. Speaking of Wooly, now that I brought him up, do you remember when the whole bit, like there was a whole bit with the best friends Reddit that he didn't exist? That bit sucked. It wasn't even funny. <laughs> yeah. Boy, that's real early Super Best Friends when not only is, not, is Liam not around, but Wooly isn't around. Yeah. I, I, I was around since that time. Like, I, I got, got into the Best Friends with their first Machinima video, I think. Ha! Huh. So, like... Man, I remember... Yeah. I remember back when all the commenters thought Wooly was white. <laughs> uh, I have so many fucking like vocal tics from them, like like repeating yes. Like that's that's not 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 necessarily a thing that I do on purpose. I mean, sometimes <laughs> just yeah. because, because I like they were one of one of the outlets from which I learned English. Maybe a bad yeah. maybe a bad choice. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest. I think you're pretty lucky to have not picked up too much from Nova. <laughs> you may be shocked to find out that the word anal is not 25% of the English vocabulary. Are you sure? Not entirely. <laughs> not I was about to say, sometimes I'm not so sure. <laughs> uh, but yeah, what was I going to say? I don't remember. So whatever. <laughs> but yeah, like, right. like I, I suppose in in a, in a way, like I, I would be open to having more like actual discussions about games. But like, you know, it it, it also needs to be with a, with a game where the editing style can fit, fit, fit it because there's games where, like even if we have real discussions, it probably won't be it won't be left in just because of the, because the game is so long, like Persona. There is no real reason to actually have like if if I well I don't know because Persona benefits from a very like jump cutty style of editing. At the same time, any fucking discussion in Persona is probably left in just because we talk so little. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, you you guys can probably see why I noped out of that series, huh? Oh yeah. I mean, we haven't done a, done a session a session of it in. A while just because schedules didn't line up. There's multiple reasons. Yeah. For one thing, Persona is LP cancer. For another thing, I know already. Do not make scheduled agreements with Iadil. <laughs> the man has no respect for schedules, and by now I'm used to it and I accept it. At the same time, I know not to make scheduled agreements with him because the man does not respect schedules. No, he actually, like, the couple times that we got him, he actually um, respected the schedule. Oh, weird. Yeah. Uh, he I just liked you like guys once, better. Man. Like he liked the... you guys better than he liked me, Ted, Soon, Steve. Well, yes, because, because he can, he can act, like, act like the straight man in the videos. Because he's too shy. And also, <laughs> freaking, like... Like... It, I I remember the, the one one point in the personal LP where he he just he just said that we were too weird, more or less, because <laughs> of the name name we gave to Joker and and the team. That that's always the value of Iadil. Iadil can suddenly flip from being like the weirdest guy on the forum 
just suddenly being like, y'all motherfuckers are freaks. <laughs> oh, but yeah. Like overall, she, she, she just needs restructuring. It's just hard with, with, with her current setup. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, we need to become a cover band. Yes. I've been saying cover, this since, we, like, day one. We cover other people's LPs. <laughs> <laughs> we, we do a play-by-play -play of the Kingdom Hearts LP and then break up. Yeah. Uh, okay, like, I... I that is one of those things where, like, I would, I would, on one hand, I don't know how, like, long Kingdom Hearts would actually take. So maybe, so maybe it's an instant, instant no, even from me, just because whatever of the time. But at the same time, I would find it really funny to have one of our last LPs be Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts uh, is not too bad time wise. Okay, then yeah. Because I have looked at looked at the at the like big bundle with all of the games and stuff. Yeah. A couple times when, when it was actually on, on sale for like a, a a price that that I can actually pay. <laughs> but yeah. but, I, but I was like, well, for on one hand, I don't know how how, how long any of these games are. And well, in a way, I suppose I I do. But at the same time, like it, I don't really watch Kingdom Hearts LP, LPs every second day. So <laughs> yeah. Hmm. And on the other hand, there's also the thing of like, if we do if, if we do a Kingdom Hearts LP, we may not finish it. <laughs> Famously, they kill channels. Yes. <laughs> I mean, like, there's um, there's two channels that I can think of where it didn't kill the channel, but with one of them, things still still happened because um, uh, one one of them or one of them one of the channels came out fine. The other one um. Is a three, was was a three man group like us, who did did the playthrough. It's one of their best playthroughs. They played through the first two games, and then the guys, uh, two of the guys left to work on work on making their own game. They have since come, ah. come they have since come back for a special uh thing where where they record recorded a couple of playthroughs together again, but they're not they're not acti actively on the roster anymore. Okay, this is very sudden. Trust yeah. me, it's very sudden for me. I need to step out. If you guys are still recording when I'm back, I will join back in, but oh, I need to step out real quick. All right. All right. So, yeah. Um, yes. I I suppose we can call yeah. it a podcast then cuz I don't I don't think we have many more topics. I believe that to be the case. And I'm All definitely right. going to call it here cuz I've definitely got stuff to do. Well then. Pink. Pink? Get the tables. Get the tables on!